today. Good morning, good afternoon, up, good night to everyone around the world. I am your favorite neighborhood beer bro, Mr. Kennedy, and I am joined once again by the lovely, beautiful, smart, and laid back Kelsey Fearless. How are you today? <laughs> Oh, thanks, Ken. I'm great. How are you today? How are uh, you today? Other than the ridiculous weather outside, it's 96 degrees out there. Oh, yuck. I'm pretty good. Um, we're doing, this is a special episode of Hot Takes, even though it is episode five. We had to do it on a Monday because Kelsey was just, she was not feeling very well last night. So, yes, all the people that were messaging me, we're here. Yeah, we're we're here. We're here. You can't stop the you can't stop the podcast. I know that's right. I hope everybody's doing good today. But yes, welcome to episode five of Hot Takes Podcast. I hope everybody's Why doing good already? today. We have pretty soon we're gonna be having a birthday girl coming up soon. It it's true. It's true. That's true. It is. Yeah, Kelsey well, we got almost Two, less than two weeks now yeah Kel kelsey's birthday is coming up and we're gonna be having a, a big birthday stream for her on on episode six which is the ninth uh literally the day after her birthday so make sure you guys come by so we can celebrate her oh i can't wait i can't wait i'll have a party hat i'll have a party hat <laughs> i hear that and we'll we will definitely have some fun today we don't have any announcements today because everything uh everything is pretty much same old same old i'm still fighting with apple Podcasts. you know i may just pay them and just call it a day <laughs> i'm trying to get the yeah. podcast up there man yeah. they're still giving you trouble eh yeah they're still being a pain in the ass because you know apple's got to do everything that apple does but anyways, oh, yeah. as you guys can see, the links up up there on the top of my stream. We're on Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio, Samsung Podcast, Pandora, Podchaser, Spreaker, Amazon Music, YouTube, and Twitch. So there's no damn excuse why y'all can't listen to the podcast, man. If exactly. You, come on. If you don't listen to the podcast, then Michael Myers is going to come by your house and slash all your tires. Oh, my God. Um, Michael Myers? Imagine, imagine how frustrating that would be. You get up and go to work and find find Michael Myers just cut up your tires like confetti, man. Slash your tires. Yes. Oh man. But yes, I like I said. I hope everybody's good. Before we get started, make sure because I I got it um I got it posted to my chat. Make sure y'all check out my YouTube video that I promised that I was gonna do. It was a little later than I wanted it to be. But can Ada be a main protagonist in her own Resident Evil game? It's about seven minutes long. I, I really think you guys will enjoy that video. I think you'll you'll have a lot of fun with that. So make sure y'all sure. y'all check it out after the podcast. After the podcast, we hold we are holding you hostage no. here. You're not going nowhere. <laughs> yeah, we are. You're being held hostage. You're not going anywhere right now, guys. Yes, you belong to us for the next couple of hours. But yes, let's get started here. Um, I have something because my notes are a little longer this time around, but I wanted to have a little bit of fun as we always do. I wanted to list nine different things of things I like to see change in the video game industry. And you can chime in and, and tell me what you think as we, we run through all of them. So number one, I would like to see them end exclusivity games i am tired of seeing games that are only exclusive to certain consoles that you can't play anywhere else you know there's yeah. a couple of games that come to mind as i named before um there is a game uh stellar blade which is only for ps5 and that caught my interest and i'm like damn i'm like i don't want to pay no 600 bucks just to play that game port it to every no, system exactly There's no point now. We have PC. Everything should be on PC at this point. That is true. I mean, at least, at least that, at least port it to PC so PC players can play. Like, I just don't understand why 
we still have games that are exclusive to certain consoles and then they wonder why their sales are so low because it's only for one console yeah exactly it's to sell the console right or even worse are timed exclusives I almost feel like that's worse. I feel like they're they're preying on people's fear of missing out, like their FOMO, because you get to see all your console friends playing a game, and you're like, oh, well, I got to wait, like, one to two years till it comes out, right? Yeah, that's true, but at least with timed exclusives, at least you know it's coming to the console. You know, that's cause, true. Because they did that with Resident Evil 4. When Resident Evil 4 came out in 05, it was exclusive, time exclusive for the, the GameCube which is amazing and now it's on everything yeah even on even on mobile phone which is another story in itself right but, i mean that thing looked like i never seen uh, mobile games look a hell of a lot look a hell of a lot better now but back then when you had like you know i, I forget what that phone was but they called it a, a gamer phone it looked like absolute trash a gamer phone don't know yeah. if I've seen that. I think it was called the Engage, the Nokia Engage. Oh yes, the Engage. Yes, 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 yes. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was. They tried. Lord knows they tried with that. They were ambitious with it, but that thing looks like a, a taco shell with buttons. A taco shell with buttons. It does. And my fingers were too big. I couldn't even. I'm like, how? Just a, a keypad, like a, a phone keypad is not it's not the ideal control for a, a gamer phone. That's I don't even like the touch screen. I hate that. That's why I don't yeah. play mobile games. I'm like, I'm not trying to do that. Give me a controller. Yeah, I I kind of see the appeal for people playing mobile games, but yeah, if you have any other platform, it's not really a point to play mobile games. Gotcha, gotcha. Number two, we need more crossplay. Now, if, for the people that don't know whether you believe it or not, there are still some games out here, a lot of games that are not not are not crossplay at all. Like you look at a game like Dead by Daylight, great game, but man, I mean, you have cross platform, but you don't have um, the feature to do the uh, the chat across all games. Like I have to have Discord open. And somebody has oh, really? to, yes, yeah, somebody has to join my Discord chat in order for us to chat if you're on a different console. But it's cross-platform play? Yeah. So it's like, you can play with anybody, even on mobile, but if, if, if you, I mean, if it's the same console, PS5, PS5, y'all can chat with each other, Xbox, Xbox. But if I'm playing on PC and somebody's on the Switch, first off, uh, I feel bad for you, but... You know, you got to join my Discord in order for us to talk. But, you know, back to oh, my... Man, it's on the Switch. Yeah, I mean... That's it's, crazy. It's on mobile, it's on the Switch, it's on every console they can get it on, which is smart because you want your game to be on all platforms so that all yeah. people can play Sony. Sony? It's like, at you. But you do have some games out here that... You know, it's there's no cross play and no cross save either. So it's like if yeah. I if I decided to you know to have a moment of crisis and go buy a Nintendo Switch, and I wanted to play Dead by Daylight on that console, I would have to start all over again. Moment of crisis, temporary insanity. Yeah, I, I'm not bagging on the Switch. I'm just kidding with y'all, but not. <laughs> But yeah, like um, I'll, there's still some games out there like you know no cross no cross play like you can't play with each other from from different consoles. You have to have the same console. We need to get rid of that. Yeah, you know, we're in a day and age where everything is digital. There is no excuse why you know I gotta buy an Xbox Series X just to be able to play a game with somebody. It makes no sense yeah. to me. Number yeah. th number three, and this is probably never going to happen, but we need to lower these damn prices on these video games, man. They getting crazy never with this stuff. $70, $75 for a game. You guys are crazy. And my, fa my father laughs at me every now and again. 
because when I was a kid and I would come to him with that, that long Christmas list down to the ground of everything that I wanted, and it would be like, like six, seven Nintendo games. My father's like, games always cost that much. Now they were a little cheaper back then, but 70 bucks. I just, I can't, I can't pay $70 for no game, man. Like I, I just can't, it's just way too much. I've said it before. Especially like, when most of them, most of them go on sale in like six months, anyways. Yeah, especially if if you're if you're a Steam player. Like I bought Dead by Daylight for under ten bucks, and then I bought it for Lori <laughs> because I was like, you, yeah. you know. And that the two games that you mentioned that you wanted, those games are I could buy both of those for under twenty bucks. See, see. But it's like, you know, it's just, I just think that it's way too much. And I've said it before that they expect for people to, to buy their console. Like it's, it's like 400, 500, $600. And then you got to pay for the online service to be able to play online. And then you have to pay 70 bucks just to have one game for the console. And it's going to get worse because once everything becomes digital, they're going to be having stuff at full price a lot in these stores. You know, they, it, I mean, you'll have sales. People are going to have to rely on, on, you know, third party websites to try to get cheaper games because I mean, even though I have steam, I go to CD keys for my stuff. Yeah. You know, so it's like, we need to, it's not going to happen. And it, as crazy as it sounds for America, you know, where, where I live, where 70 bucks, if you go to, to other countries like Australia and stuff, them dudes is paying over a hundred bucks for one game. Oh, I know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Some places it's like incredible. And I don't get it because we don't need, why are we paying the full price for the digital version now? When we like the same price for the digital version as we were playing for the physical version. Like, yeah, the price of games stayed the same, but we're getting less and less. Yeah. And we don't even get the box. We don't get the game. No manual. And that's not even counting, like, if they have, like, special editions and stuff like that. If you think I'm going to pay over 100 yeah. bucks just to have every little bit of DLC or every little bit of, of costumes or cosmetics, they out of their mind. I'm not paying for that stuff. Like, I bought, again, I keep bringing up Dead by Daylight shows you how much I'd be playing it. But um <laughs> I bought that I bought that game and I paid five dollars to get Jill and that was it. <laughs> like Yeah, I'm, well that's money well spent. You better believe it. I also got Heather as well too. <laughs> or Cheryl as that's they well like spent. to call her. Actually <clears throat> actually, actually I'm they are not my friends. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm working. They I'm, are. I'm working on making that a sound bite, so I can start using that. Oh man. Yeah. So, anyways, that's let, a good one. let's move on to to number four, backwards compatibility. Now they they're much better with this stuff now. They are much better with it. But I still think we just need to go full like full straight ahead, full steam ahead. PS Five. I know the consoles would be able to, they would be costing more if they did that, but there's no reason why you can't have the PS5 play PS4 games, PS3, PS2, and PS1 games. It should be able to go all the way back. And even throwing, yeah, and... Th I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Even give us some, some PSP and PS Vita uh, playthroughs on that too. Xbox. Y'all should be able to play the series games. Y'all should be able to play the Xbox One games, the 360 games, and the original Xbox. Nintendo. Yeah, I'm um, skipping along. <laughs> they'll just they'll just resell it. They'll just sell you it again on a different platform. And I think that's the thing with backwards compatibility. I think it's easier for them to sell uh games from like you know ps2 ps3 whatever era on the store online but it's so it's soft software like you literally got people who made emulators that can play this stuff there is no there's no extra hardware they're gonna have to put with this stuff they can literally just put put emulators and clouds and stuff like not cloud service but 
emulators of software so that people can just play these games. Yeah. You know, give people but, bang for their buck. I mean, but, you know how cool it would be to go back and, and to load up Devil May Cry 2, not 2. What the hell am I talking about? Devil May Cry 2 <laughs> is garbage. Devil May Cry 3, <laughs> you know, on the PS5, that would be cool instead of having to buy everything all over again. But they make you buy it all over again. Yeah. Instead, they just, that oh. Won't change. We'll just do a collection and then we'll make you pay 50 bucks for it because you're a sucker and we know you want it. <laughs> yes. It's like, we People still got your it. money. Anyways, let's move on to number five here. Less remakes. Now, everybody's still going on about this. Uh, you know, they want the Co-Veronica remake, which I'm, I'm happy to receive that. That's fine. But I don't need Capcom relying on this like a crutch like they did with the costumes in Street Fighter 4. I don't want a whole bunch of remakes. You're going to have to move along and do something different after a while. Everybody's talking about this Resident Evil 1 remake remake. And I've stated before, I don't want it. I don't need it. We, we have one that's good. Resident Evil Co. Veronica, go ahead and remake that. Remake uh, Dino Crisis. I'd like to see that. And then people are talking about, you know, <laughs> and, uh, they're talking about remaking Resident Evil 5. And every time somebody mentions that, I could just picture myself just showing up at Capcom's headquarters. And just taking those plans for a Resident Evil 5 remake and just burning them outside in, in the parking lot <laughs> never to be seen again we don't need no resident <laughs> evil 5 remake man we need resident evil 9 yeah they're, they're talking about resident evil 9 they're talking about announcing that in january of next year and they're talking about doing like an open world thing i'm not really gonna say much about it until we get some concrete stuff. Yeah, because I don't want to be like world. Uh, open world Resident Evil. I actually I could dig that. You know, if it's something like, you know, they did with State of Decay, you know, where you could just That'd be cool. That would be pretty damn cool. Dino Crisis That'd 3 was within two. Dino Crisis 3 was trash. I don't even consider that to be a Dino Crisis game. And they came out with that crap on the Xbox. Ah, uh, man. It was just like the third birthday. They call that uh, a Parasite Eve game. I don't I don't call that no Parasite Eve game. Oh, yeah. You know, but they need to go back and remake it. The second, the, the second Dino Crisis, I don't think we... That was an action shooter type of game. I don't think that needs a remake. I think that Capcom should just take the first Dino Crisis remake that and then show or well, do the co Veronica and then show with the remakes. I just my whole point yeah. is I don't want it to become a crush to where they just go back and just keep remaking games to make money and then we don't get nothing new. You know, Square Enix as well too. Square Enix remake the first Parasite Eve and then move on. Give me a new Bushido Blade. I would jump at that before I would play the Parasite Eve remake. You know, and I will Before say this. Remaking all the Final Fantasy. I will say this and then I will move on. If you're going to remake, if you are going to do Cole Veronica, if you are going to do, if you did do Dino Crisis, do it right. Don't half-ass it like you did Resident Evil 3 to remake. Yuck. Take everything in that take everything in that original Dino Crisis and remake it from the ground up. Period. Anyways, it though, it would be so good. Yes, it would. Can you imagine? Like, can you imagine what the dinosaurs would look like? Your Regina being chased by a giant T Rex. That jump would be horrifying, man. It would be so good. It'd be so good. Yeah, it would I, I would I would love to play that. Anyways, let's move on. Number six, bring back multiplayer split screen. 
there is no there's no reason for me to have to if i want to play a video game with one of my friends at their house i should not have to bring my console to connect to the internet so that we can do uh uh you know do multiplayer what happened to multiplayer sp split screen remember uh 007 for the nintendo 64 oh yeah when you had four oh, four yeah. screens and you could do four players they don't even have that no more they don't have split screen uh multiplayer anymore why do i have to bring my console then connect it to, the, to his internet and then we could play the game together that's ridiculous you know people do go to each other's houses right not everybody sits at home and just plays online all the damn time bring it back stop taking away yep. stop taking away features from us man i think gaming is so anti-social now like even online gaming is so anti-social i noticed that like and they, I, I get people can be toxic in games. Sorry, I grew up in the toxic era. But, like, it's so antisocial because I used to love going and, yeah, like, usually it would be, like, fighting games. You just get a group of people and you'd, like, you know, you'd, like, switch out the loser or the winner or whatever. Not anymore. We don't mm -hmm. have that anymore. Yeah, I just, I wish they would bring that back, you know, just... They're just they're taking away features, and I'm I'm the type of guy that I just don't like stuff to be removed. Give me all of the of the features and all of the choices that I want. Don't just take stuff away. You know it's irritating. All right, let's move on. Number seven, no more paying for services to play online. It's already bad enough that a lot of us pay fit forty, fifty, sixty dollars. To have internet why do we have to pay for a service on your console just to be able to play online that's just cheating people we already have the online service you know so what you got to pay for the the sony whatever the hell that thing is called you got to pay for the the xbox game pass and then you got to pay for nintendo's crappy $25 a year service. It's only 25 bucks. I know people are going to say that. Stop being cheap. Stop being a cheap ass. That's not the point, it's you the dumbass. Principle. That's not the, the principle of the situation. Exactly. Yeah. Again, it's just another another thing that they tacked on that just it, it's irritating. We shouldn't have to pay for that. You know, the the only game that the only game that you don't have to deal with that with is Fortnite, but give me a damn break. I mean, our, our people look Fortnite's a cool game and all that, but damn, how many people are clamoring? You know, if you're just getting the Nintendo Switch, I'm gonna download Fortnite so I can play online. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, just it's true. Like it's ridiculous, man. No more paying for that stuff, or at least lower it, because you know they're talking about increasing. I've seen it. Um, they increase Netflix. And I, I just believe that it's going to be like a snow, like a snowball effect where they're going to just start increasing all these prices on these online services and stuff. Hulu did it already. Um, what's the other one? Uh, the Disney Plus, which who the hell buys that anyways? But the Disney Plus, you know, you have like they're just increasing prices. Don't be surprised when the gaming when the gaming consoles start doing that stuff. And PlayStation ups their price, and Xbox ups their price, and Switch up. Oh, you know what? That's actually, I was just reading that that might happen for the Game Pass because it's Call of Duty. I forgot about that. They are, I read an article that Microsoft was thinking about increasing the price of the Xbox Game Pass to accommodate the fact that they were going to put call, the new Call of Duty on it. So it's happening, Ken. It's happening. Does it look like I give a flying crap about nope. Call of Duty? <laughs> nope. What? But that's punishing all these people just for that. But what, like, what does having Call of Duty have to do with them increasing their online, their online service price? Like, what does one have to do with the other? I think it's because they, they add games on release. Like, they'll add it on release to Game Pass, and I think they're bleeding money that way at this point. I think that's what's happening, is games come out, 
and they immediately go to Game Pass, and then, yeah, they're, like, bleeding money. No one's making any money. So I think that's what is happening. So like, so screw on. so screw over the gamers because of that. They need to figure out mm -hmm. other, other standards and practices to make money. That's what a business does, not bleeding money from your consumer. You know, because it's going to get to a point... It's going to get to a point that if they keep doing that stuff, people are just not going to be able to afford it. And then you'll lose money anyways. Mm -hmm. Which so, I think is probably what they're thinking, right? But no, they're just they're losing money. They're just thinking about, you know, they're just thinking about, hey, you know, they think we're dumb. And they think we're just going to buy whatever the hell they put out, which is some, you know, a lot of people would do. But I, this is why I keep saying, vote with your wallet. Tell these guys, no, I'm not going to pay for this crap. I'm only going to pay for what the hell you give me, what I asked for. You know, but you got people that, that live and die by these companies. You know, Sony, oh, you know, you, you would think Sony, like, freaking gave birth to them and took care of them their whole entire life and stuff like that. I'm like, dude, it's a logo. Chill. You say... <laughs> You say something about Xbox, people come at you with pit, pitchforks. Oh, man, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, man. It's like you a neckbeard, man. I'm like, damn, at least I can go facial hair, bro. You got patches missing all over here and stuff. And oh, Nint dude. Nintendo, I'm not even going to get into that one. No. A lot of blue-haired people right there. I'm like, <laughs> man, you just chill. I'm like, yo... I'm like, you think people like this, this, tri uh, what is it? Tribalism is what I'm thinking about. It's just like wrestling fans. Like, I'm, you know, just a quick tangent. Wrestling fans, you say anything about WWE? Holy crap. You would think that you cursed out their mother or something. You say something about AEW, here they come with their, with their freaking skinny jeans and stuff. Wanting to freaking jump on your case. Chill out. I criticize every single thing. Anytime, if it's Sony, I don't care if it's if it's Microsoft, I don't care if it's Nintendo, I don't care if it's it's PC, I don't care if it's mobile, I don't care if it's a damn toaster. If it's cheating us, I'm gonna say something about it because it's not right. Right over. Someone's gotta. Most people are just quiet. Most people are though. Most people just totally accept it. Just take it. They're like, oh okay, I'm supporting the company. We'll help them make better games. Meanwhile, they're getting screwed all the way down. Yeah, that's true. And the thing is, if you don't say something and you keep paying for this stuff, it's going to tell these companies that it's okay to do this stuff. That's why they're freaking, they're cutting content out of the game and reselling it to you. That's why we have DLC mm -hmm. now. People yeah. got to stand up and they got to be like, yo, I'm not doing, I'm not dealing with this stuff, man. Anyways, sorry to go off on that tangent, but you know I know That's why we're here. Yeah, I know y'all love the y'all love when I go off on a on one of those tirades, especially about Resident Evil Five. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, let's move on. Number eight, we got two more left. Number eight, I like to see more imports from other countries. When I was growing up and I was, you know, the PlayStation was was ruling the world and you had Dreamcast and all of that. Um, also, Sega Saturn, criminally underrated system. We had imports from Europe. We had imports from Japan. Like there's a lot of games that people, a lot of games that are out there right now that people don't even know exist. And even back then, when I tell people, yeah, I got Cowboy Bebop for the PlayStation, they didn't even know that that Cowboy Bebop had a game. I'm, I'm like, well, yeah, it's, it's a flying simulator because go figure. But, you know, I'd like to see them import more games and not just have region locked on everything. I want to be able to, mm -hmm. re to reach out and to get any game from Japan or from Europe or, or you know, even up there. You know, so that's what I like. I like to see them get rid of, yeah, I mean, get rid of, bring in more imports so that we can have more options. More options is always better. What do you think? Are there any games outside of countries that you would like to get your hands on? Oh, 
man, I honestly I can't I can't think of any because most of the ones that I want, I'm trying to think. Um but one of one of the big issues I have is a lot of different things are region locked. Uh a, or they're platform locked. And I noticed that when I was playing uh what was it? Fatal Frame. Now I was learning that like the the different modes, like you had to go through battle mode and everything. In the European version, you just get it. It's just there. It's just unlocked. And it's like changes like that, I I'm I, I'm not I'm not a fan of, but it would be really cool, like especially, you know, like Japan exclusives, because they're usually made for a Japanese audience, whereas you have games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, horror games made for an American audience. The guy who was talking to this made nostalgia, just like how in the OGs, like Silent Hill doesn't have Japanese voice acting. Because it was made for America. Imagine if it had Jap imagine Silent Hill with Japanese voice acting though. Oh, I would have loved it, considering I watch anime oh, only yeah. only in Japanese. I do not watch dubbed. Yeah. But if if you're an anime fan, I mean the Japanese the Japanese imports are what you want to go for. If you want to play the Gundam games and Sailor Moon, which I have up here, I may play that one of these days. The arcade game from 1995, beat 'em up style. That that game is hard as hell. I vaguely rem <laughs> I vaguely remember. I think it was in in a Pizza Hut. I saw it like two or three times and because you used to have the arcade machine and then they changed it to final fight. But yeah, this is, I, I just like to have all options, especially if I'm spending my hard earned money on stuff. I don't like options taken away from me. And that's the, the whole point of this list and that everybody's getting screwed in some kind of way. Anyways, though, let's move on to number nine. Number nine is, is if you're a, uh, if you're a PC player and that's what you're used to, or if you decide to go back to console, consoles need to have more keyboard and mouse support. Now for Xbox, I don't know about Sony just yet because I haven't had a PlayStation since PlayStation 3 because I went on to the Xbox 360 and then I had the Xbox One and then the Series X. Uh, we need more keyboard and mouse support. Now there are some games that have yeah, I think it's maybe like 10 or 15 games total that have keyboard and mouse. And of course, one of them is Fortnite, you know, but um, I like to see keyboard and mouse. I like to see that option implemented in every single game. Like if you want to play on controller, you should have the choice to do that. If you want to do keyboard and mouse, then you should be able to do that as well. But there's a problem. One of the issues that I had, because when when you know when i was playing fortnite on the console it if the system went to sleep then your keyboard and all that stuff was shut off so can you wake it up back up you can but if you're in if you're in the middle of a game or something and and like the light goes off on your xbox the everything goes dead so it's like the keyboard goes dead the mouse doesn't work it works but you have to Ugh. wake it back up so imagine, you know, you're almost about to win. You're in the middle of a fight, goes to sleep, you're dead. <laughs> oh, Lord. And then the next thing you know, you're, you're taking a hammer to your keyboard. It's not healthy, folks. But yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know about Sony. I think that Sony does have, I think Sony does have some games that you can play keyboard and mouse, but it's like, I think it's games like Zombie Army Trilogy, not Zombie Army Trilogy, Zombie Zombie Army 4. I know for a fact that that's keyboard and mouse. Call of Duty, but who gives a shit? Um, you know, but I think like 10 or 15 games you could play keyboard and mouse. I like to see that feature put in all games, you know? Yeah, yeah. I bet Sony, does Sony make you buy their own personal brand of keyboard and mouse like they do for everything else? No, that, that sounds more yeah. like, that sounds more like what Microsoft would do. Actually, yeah. I, I know they do that. I know people who stream and stuff say like, if you're trying to stream from a PlayStation, you can only use Sony's camera. 
Yeah. That's and I serious. guess I guess they could do that with the Swiss too. They'd be like, yo, go back and buy the Apple II computer keyboard. <laughs> a brick, a monster of a keyboard. <laughs> like, we got keyboard and mouse support. You just go and get this <laughs> this old antiquated keyboard. Yeah. With a big ass mouse. Remember yeah. the the mouse with the trackball? You won't even be able to use Bluetooth. I know. And and then you'd have to take out the trackball and you have to like clean it off and stuff. I remember that. Yeah. Ah, Nintendo fans are gonna hate my guts. <laughs> Anyways, though, so that's the that's the nine things that I wanted to see change about the video game industry. Are we gonna get some of those things? Like the, the price drop? Hell no. But it will go up. But it, it just will make gaming more fun for myself, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys as well. Anyways, let's move on here. Speaking speaking of video games, since we're on that topic, we just got another Prince of Persia game. And it's not the one that I was hoping that we would get, but it's another Prince of Persia game. It's called The Rogue Prince of Persia. It will be made by the same team that did the Dead Cell games. And I know that you guys have, some of you guys have played that, and it does sound like a cool concept, but it's not the Prince of Persia game that I wanted because they announced back, I believe it was January 21st, 2001, that they were going to be remaking Prince of Persia Sands of Time, which was on the PS2 and then later on the PS3. Yeah. And they announced that they did a trailer. I haven't seen anything on that game since. Did they cancel it or is it still like in development hell? I don't know. Like I've, I've been looking, trying to keep up with it. They came out with two new Prince of Persia games. They had the one before this, which tanked, you know, it, it didn't do too well. And then they got this one coming up. I haven't heard a damn thing about, about Sands of Time. And that's the one that people wanted. I can't tell you how excited I was to see that Sands of Time is one of the best games that the PS2 ever had and P PC as well too, being able to travel back and forth through time and stuff. And I just thought that that was a cool concept, but we're, we're getting this one. So if, if you're a fan of the Dead Cell games, you may like this. So, you know, check it out. Just thought I would let y'all know. the same. Yeah, Still it's being just- made, okay, good. It's just not, not, I mean, if it's still being made, I mean, it's been three years. Come on now. It's been three years. Either they put it put it on the back burner because they're getting ready to come out with this new. Um, I don't even know if they if they still the same company still makes the same thing. Because I know that they put Prince of Persia on the back burner to do the Assassin's Creed games. Which I had absolutely we don't need more. Now, I will say I will say the new one. That's, you know, where you're a samurai and a ninja, that did catch my interest. It's set in place in, the, in feudal Japan, because I love stuff like that. I, I love, you know, samurai, samurai, um, kunoichi or shinobi, anything like that, where it's a game like that. Or, uh, you know, watching the anime or watching movies, I love stuff like that. So I may try it. I may try it. And now it's time for me to bag on Microsoft. Because here we go. <laughs> we don't just we don't just do that for Nintendo. We do it for everybody. All right, Microsoft. Now we've had the Xbox. We had the Xbox 360, Xbox One series, and we got the Series X and Series um, S. Can you explain to me why? that you guys are still including battery powered controllers in your consoles when every other console has rechargeable controllers. You have I know. PlayStation has had it since the PS3. Even Nintendo has it. The joy cons are rechargeable. Why do we still, why do I still have to buy double A batteries to use your controller? I know Bane of my existence. And before somebody says, well, you can buy rechargeable batteries, why? Why should I have to do that? It's just another extra thing that I got to pay for. And I know they have they have a rechargeable controller, but that thing is it's like 150 bucks used. 
used. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, there is no excuse why you have to have have to have double A batteries. I should not have to buy a freaking battery pack and then have to plug it into the wall and wait for it to charge with the Jeopardy music playing in the background. Jeopardy music. And I'm just glad that I'm on PC now because I'm like, man, you know, that's you got to get with the times, man. I know I, I bag on Nintendo about this stuff, but Xbox, come on, man. Just the next system, the next Xbox system, I want you to include a rechargeable controller, even if you have to charge a little bit extra money. That's that's all I'm asking, please. Because I, I have that. Because I have the I have the controller here, and I got freaking what eight eight rechargeable double A batteries that I keep yep. pl plugged in over there. Because when it dies, say, oh my controller is gonna die. Let me run over here and get the batteries. Why? Why? It's just extra yeah. money that you shouldn't have to pay. That's all I'm saying. That's yeah. All... I should just be able to like plug it into my computer and have it charge or whatever. And unplug it again. Yeah, I, I'm really thinking about. I mean, I don't even use controller that much, anyways, except for Dragon Age Inquisition, and then I used it for Resident Evil Remake, and then I I think I used it for yeah, I think uh, um WWE 2K23 because keyboard and mouse is is freaking awful. It's awful for those three games, and I'm really thinking about just going to get a PS5 controller. And the only reason why I even have this one is because I got it free because I used to work for EA security over there. So they just gave it to me free. They just gave you one. That's pretty slick deal. But yeah, I, I think that all the time. I'm always buying myself over getting a PlayStation controller. Yeah, it seems way more convenient at this point. And it's like, that's true. I mean, because if, if Nintendo would the switch, the Joy-Cons are rechargeable. There should be no reason Microsoft... If you're going to charge extra money for things, at least add something like that. I don't want no damn, no damn hairdo that you charge extra money for. Give me a freaking controller that's rechargeable. That's all I'm saying. Another thing I'd like to it's see them change. Another thing that I would like to see them change is I like more plug and play features for their console. If you look at the Xbox series or the series X, the USB is exactly what it is. It's just a USB port. You plug stuff in, you could charge your phone for people who still do that. You know, you could plug the plug the controller in and stuff like that. But what I mean by plug and play is I should be able, if you have a USB feature, you should be able to just plug in any microphone that you want to. Sony, you can you know do that. What you use? No. This microphone does not work, even though it, it, it is connected XRL, but it has a USB feature as well, too. You can't plug and play microphones into the Xbox. Trust me, I tried. That's one of the reasons why I moved on the PC, because I wouldn't have been able to use the short, um, the short MB7 microphone I got. Couldn't use my mixer, can't even use the, uh, the stream deck without getting a whole bunch of, you know, whole bunch of crap that you have to do to backdoor your way in at least with sony they have a little bit more leeway you can plug this microphone directly in and you can use this mic with some headphones xbox there they explained it that their usb ports are simply just to power things like your like i said your controller if the batteries are dying or you need to charge your phone i would like to see them change that You know, because a lot of people don't really headset mics. I, I'm not really a fan of that. You know, I don't. I don't really like. You know, I'm, I don't want to look like no helicopter pilot with a freaking headset and a microphone coming here. I want good quality audio. I'm a stickler for that. So just give us more of that feature. You know. Mm-hmm. It could be so easy. Yeah, because you got some you got some good microphones out there right now, like the Audio Technica AT2020. That's a damn good microphone that's got a USB feature. 
and that would just if you're streaming off the xbox that would make your audio that much better just like that you got the pod mic you know you got this microphone if you want to get the, the sm7 well the sm7b is is xrl only but um you got some really good mics i don't want to you know just use a headset mic there's a lot of people that really don't like to have these things on their head while they're playing the game and it just would be nice to just have more plug and play you know that's all i'm saying yeah we, and nintendo again going back to that i couldn't even use these now th these are headphones but it also has a detachable microphone i couldn't even use this oh, on the yeah. switch I have to buy their little crappy cotton candy colored headsets that work on there. <laughs> and then you Powerful have to way. you have to download the Nintendo the Nintendo chat thing on your phone and then plug it in there and then you have to do voice chat through that and I'm like, what is this ass backwards stuff, man? Holy crap. Anyways though. Alright, so I'm done bagging on Microsoft. Microsoft fans put the pitchforks down. Don't be burning stuff outside of outside of my place. Don't be calling my phone just to say Resident Evil 5 repeatedly just to get me riled up. <laughs> yeah. Nintendo will catch up eventually, just like Apple will catch up eventually. Ten years from now when Apple has their first foldable phone. It'll be the same thing again. Nintendo slow. And they talking about coming out. Um, Furukawa was talking about announcing the, the new Nintendo Switch in March or April of next year. And I just hope that it's a more powerful console because you have a lot of companies, AAA companies that are admitting that they're skipping the Switch because it's too it's not powerful enough to run their stuff. These games are getting way, way bigger. Like these games, yeah. some of these games, like 150 gigabytes. Imagine what they're putting in that stuff. And it's like, you know, when it comes when it comes to Apple, you know, it took them all the way up. Like I said before, it took them all the way up until the iPhone 15 to finally give you type C charging for the phones. They were just talking about that in chat. Yeah, I know. And that's crazy. Yeah, I got the 13. I got, I got the 13 right here. Still that damn lightning cable crap. Oh, God. Just too long. Take too long to get anywhere. But anyways, since we're ranting about stuff and since y'all seem to like that kind of thing, let's talk about GameStop. I can't even believe they're even still around. But yes, let's talk about GameStop. GameStop, I believe, needs to start needs to start selling PC games. They don't sell any PC games except for online at full price. And then they got a couple of their, you know, their crappy PC accessories. But I, I would like to actually see them sell PC games in store. That's what I like to see. And one of the things that, that that they've been doing for years that I really wish that they wouldn't do anymore, but it doesn't look like they're going to do that. How is it that you can have a stack of video games like that damn high and then you go in there and you trade it? It's like, yo, I'm about to trade this and get some money and stuff, man, so I can go buy a new game. And you got like, you know, 20, 25 games and they do that. Oh, yeah, uh, it comes up to five dollars. Oh, I remember that. And Many I'm like, times in my life, I'm like five dollars. I'm like, you know how much I pay for all these damn games? I paid over 30 bucks for most of these games. It's like, yeah, $5. Mm -hmm. And then and then they'll turn around and take those games and they'll put it on the shelf and sell it for like 30 bucks, $35, 40 bucks. I'm like, why y'all doing that to people, man? Cheating the shit out of people, right. man. I used oh, to I remember that. I ain't my that. I used to hate that crap because I'd be like, man, they'd be like, oh, you can go sell it. And you know the answer they would give you? Well, you, you can go to the pawn shop and sell it there. Right. I'm like, man, and me more there. they don't give you nothing. They go based off of what what they go to, to based off of what GameStop or Best Buy has. And then they go by that. Yeah. 
So you're, you're getting I screwed either way. There was a local, like, secondhand game store that I used to, in a city I lived with, and that was the only one, that was the only one that, like, they were fair, and then also you could pay them in Tim Hortons gift cards. You could trade them Tim Hortons gift cards, you could trade the owner, so, like, coffee gift cards for games. It was great, and then they had a wall of shame for every person that had ever given, like, it was so funny. Every person that had given them an empty gift card, they had a wall of shame. I don't it want was an no, honor system. I don't want no damn coffee gift cards, man. I'm trading games. No, you, you trade him with it. You buy him it and he'll take it. He'll God. take it. It was. It's just like a normal thing here that people give you Tim Hortons gift cards for like gifts. Like it's a, you know, it's such a thing. So yeah, you take a stack of them and you go in and be like, I'd like that game. Here you go. Have some coffee. Oh, I would. I mean, man, ah, uh, I don't want no coffee, man. <laughs> I don't even like God coffee. you drink coffee. His name was Bluebeard. Had a legit dyed blue beard, and I'm telling you, that dude drank coffee like by the boatload. So I get that. Yeah, I, I heard that. I heard that they named JavaScript after him. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was tweaked. Yeah, but yeah, I. I would like to see them. Uh, I mean, I don't think physical games is going to be a thing that much longer anyways. And what's going to end up happening when we go all digital, you just know that the guys that do have physical copies on eBay and Amazon, you know, they're going to be selling them for ridiculous prices. Oh, yeah. Do you oh, yeah. do you know that a physical copy on PC for Silent Hill 3, there's a guy selling it for like 500 bucks. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's a scam. And I, I scam. love it's like my my physical big box copy of Silent Hill Two. People are selling it for thousands, and I'm like, it's not worth that much. I'm like, it's not worth that much. It's not really not. And I I really yeah. I really like Silent Hill Three, but I could think of five hundred good reasons why I wouldn't spend five hundred dollars on that game. It yeah. ain't it ain't happening, Captain. I'm just I'm just not paying paying that much for no game. I'm not even paying over a hundred bucks for a game. You know, it's just it's ridiculous. It's just everywhere you look, somebody's you know somebody got their hand out trying to screw you, man. Just you got to pay this extra amount here, pay this here. You know, that's what happens when games are no longer made or funded by people who play games. Yeah. You know? And this is why this is why I'm saying right now, if you are an indie game developer, this is your chance now to take over the industry. This is your time. If there was ever a time, because because triple A companies are suffering right now, they don't really have much going on. Square Enix lost over one hundred twenty million dollars last year in the canceled games. And the rest uh, rest of was about to say, get it off your mind, man. Final Fantasy seven. <laughs> Final Fantasy 7, the remake, it didn't sell so well. So I heard that with the Alone in the Dark remake too was a failure. Yeah, because it Which sucks. Off like, thing, but yeah. No, I'm not gonna say it sucks. I'm gonna try it first, but it really does. It really looks like amateur hour. It looks like a yeah, like a, a older console game. You know that they have and i just it didn't sell very well plus it was full of glitches and all that stuff too but if you're like i said if you're an indie game developer this is your chance because you guys a lot of the games that y'all got out there torment of souls excellent game you know this um mm -hmm. what's that bloodstained ritual of the night if you're a fan of the castlevania games like um symphony of the night symphony of the night you would love that you know, this is your chance to finally to finally get your work out there because people are going to start turning to you guys for good quality games. Oh, that's where we're at now, at least. Like, I find so many good indie games, and it's almost like you almost can't even tell now. Like, who made what? That's true. These guys, are, guys and women are working hard, and I, I can't wait to see. I'm more excited for Tormented Souls 2 than I am for anything coming out from triple a 
Yeah, I, I really don't have much of an interest of anything. I mean, State of Decay 3, I guess you can say, but that's not until 2000, what, 26, 2027? When they're going to really? come out with that? They only did one. They, they pulled a Prince of Persia remake. They had one trailer, which you can make that on the computer, and then I heard nothing else about it after that. I heard I heard nothing else about that game. People are excited for Grand Theft Auto 6. I don't really care. Like, I, I like Grand Theft Auto. Like, my city was cool. I don't, I don't really care. Like, that doesn't really grab me, Grand Theft Auto 6. What do you freaking do? You know, I'm more excited for, like I said, I'm more excited for Torment of Souls 2 than anything else. Even more than Metal Gear. Torment Souls 2 coming out. I'm sorry? Do you know when Torment Souls 2 is coming out? No date. Sorry, I didn't know if there was a date. No, okay. It's, it's so. to be determined. But um, yeah. they are working on it. I mean, because this is an indie game. This is an indie game developer. So you know that it takes a little bit longer for them. Because they don't have the amount of money that, that a Sony would have or a Nintendo or, you know, a Microsoft. But yeah, so let me ask you a question moving along here. What is your favorite video game memory? Hmm, I actually have a few, but most of them are, uh, most of them are actually from my MMO days. Um, my favorite video game memory, and I bring this up all the time, actually, was when I was young and you, we had like had this whole guild and it was like PVP guilds. This was back in the day when MMOs were still not soft. Like nowadays they, they don't even have this kind of win world PVP where you can like make rivalries and thing. But I can remember like i i'd be coming home weekend after school getting on with gang there would be like 100 to 200 people fighting each other and then i also remember in that same mmo i can remember this um i can also remember it was actually it's funny to say this I can also remember saying spending like god like 50 60 hours farming things for a weapon and then i got there and i made the wrong weapon and i always thought that was funny yeah, I mean, I mean, when when I talk about video game memories, I'm not talking about like in game memories. I'm talking about like from your like from your childhood, like like a special memory that, oh, that you hold was near my and childhood. I guess that was just like honestly all through high school. That's what I did was just like getting home and playing with friends and stuff. Nice. That is kind of like my childhood memories. It's the best one I had, I think. Got you. My favorite one yeah. that I still hold near and dear, um, and I, I tell my dad about this all the time, but it was uh, when I was a little kid, um, my cousins would always get consoles before my brother and I could get it, you know, because my father had to save money to get it. And, you know, my cousins, when they would get the Nintendo and Super Nintendo and stuff, they would never let me play because they said I was too small and I was too little. So I, when the Nintendo, this is my, my fondest memory. I used to come home crying all the time. Like they, they won't let me play. They won't let me play. And my dad said, don't worry. I'm going to get you your own one. At night, Christmas, 1992, he bought me the, my first Nintendo. And, and I remember being so happy that I was running around the house. I was so excited and stuff. And that, that is to me, that's the, my fondest memory of my whole entire life like that feeling because I, I loved it and I played the hell out of that system. And then he did it again for the Super Nintendo because when they got the Super Nintendo, they wouldn't let me play that. So I would come home upset <laughs> and he's like, I'm gonna get you your own. And you know, a lot of people in my family were like, oh, he's just gonna break it. And my father's like, and I'll just buy him another one. I want him to have his own cool. things. I don't want my son coming home crying. He needs to have his own. And that's that to me, that's that's a memory that I go back and I think about all the time. I mean, I was six years old. And I still yeah. remember I still remember how that, that feeling that I, that I was feeling back then. It's like my, my dad's the I best. My dad's the best. That's that's oh yeah, my dad did the, the exact same thing. My dad was always a gamer, so 
you said PC, but I can remember, you remember when Toys R Us? Yes. Was just like any sort of thing. And they had those, they had those, uh, like they had the demo of the consoles. I can remember my sister and I, and we were big into Pokemon as kids, right? We found an N64 that had Pokemon Stadium. And I can remember us driving all the way back from the mall. We're like telling my dad, like, you know, oh, we want, we want. I guess he went and talked to my mother. And then he disappeared for like half an hour and came back and we had an N64. Yeah. <laughs> I got that in 1997. But that's a cool memory though. Cause it's like, you know, those are the things that, that really make you smile when you go back and you think about stuff like that. And it was something that my father told me, you know, to tell a quick story about my dad. Um, I didn't realize it until he told me because he's the youngest of his family and I'm the youngest of mine. So we had that that connection whenever my father would buy me things, whether it was toys, like my stuff was always bigger and better and better colors than everybody else's. So like when like let, I'll give you like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for an example. Everybody would have the regular colors. My stuff would be chrome colored, like shiny colored, superhuman samurai cyber squad. Everybody had the original, like the blue, red, and, and uh, gray colored one. Mine was gold. Mine was gold and blue. So I always have, and I, I didn't realize it until he was telling me, he's like, you realize that your stuff always was better than everybody else's. Like with X-Men, like uh my brother had bishop he had a giant bishop he had a uh i forget the other one i think it was mr sinister i think he had i had cyclops but it was gold it was a gold cyclops and then i had a a gold saber tooth so my stuff was always bigger a better better color and i'm like damn i didn't even realize that he's like i was just letting you know that i know exactly how you feel and that, you know, and that's just things like that. Like I said, my father's yeah. the best. My father's the best. You were the baby of the family, huh? You got treated like royalty as the baby. Well, he, I was, was the baby of the family. <laughs> it was that connection that, that we have and we still have because he had it with my granddad because my granddad was the baby of his, well, not the baby, but he was the, the youngest that was living of his family. So yeah. they had that connection. My brother had cool stuff too. Like he would have like, you know, like silver and black, things like that. So this stuff was still better than everybody else's, but I just had like limited edition. Like I was the only one that had, uh, when they had the giant Ninja Turtles, I think my cousins had Michelangelo. My brother had Raphael and I had the giant Leonardo, which nobody else had. <laughs> nobody no could find Leo. It. So it's like, yeah. yeah. I like I like to tell stories about about my dad like that, you know, because my, my, my dad still to this day is still the best father a man could ask for. And I got something special for him as far as videos go, something special for him that that I'm working on. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, but those are my favorite video game memories, you know, those are, besides oh, the, the arcade games, because I, I'll share one more and then, then that's it. Then we can move on. Um, my father worked for three different arcades. He worked for Mr. Arcade, Sport Time USA, Super Amusements. So when you talk about some of the best birthday parties a kid could ever have, my brother and I, oh man, holy crap. He would throw these big birthday parties and they would bring out that big cake and we would have like just infinite amount of, of tokens. They weren't called quarters then because you had tokens, the gold coins that you had to put in the machine. And we just had free range of everything. He always had tokens, always had them. So like kids used to get mad. He'd be like, man, how come you always get to play the games and stuff? I'm like, cause, cause we cool like that. I'm like we cool like that. Nah, but in reality, my dad had, he had tokens all the time. So we had some of the best, like big elaborate birthday parties. And I'm like, damn. And I look at it now, I'm, I'm 38, and I'm like, damn. I'm like, I'd like a birthday party right about now. <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. I can remember she used to take, like, crazy parties. I remember going rock wall climbing one year for my birthday, and now I'm like, 
oh no that's okay i'll just have my have my cake and rock yeah. wall climbing you could not pay me to do that oh yeah oh it was fun i had to be like seven or eight maybe i had to be a kid i'm not doing nothing that requires my feet to be off the ground <laughs> you're a land dweller only eh yep i am a land person I remember my parents, I, I vaguely remember my parents taking me on a roller coaster and I screamed like an opera singer. <laughs> you don't like roller coasters, eh? No, I don't. I don't like roller coasters. And I was, I mean, I was screaming. I was screaming so high. I think I was bothering dogs that day. <laughs> Dog whistling. And I was like, I never got on another roller coaster ever again after that. No. That's I was like, I was terrified, man. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, those are those are some of my my best memories as a kid. There's a lot more, but we're not gonna dwell too much on it. Now let's move on. Cause this is a question that I've that I've always wanted to know. Cause I haven't been streaming as long as you have. But what do you do? Like, what do you do after you have a bad stream? Like, what's your mindset? Like, what do you do after that? <laughs> I, I, that's actually, I think one of the things that I always tell myself when I have a bad stream is like, usually I'll just like chillax, but I try not to beat myself up about it. But the biggest thing I always tell myself is you're not going to remember this stream in like two three weeks i think a big part of that is because i stream five days a week but like sometimes i'll have a bad stream especially with internet issues nothing like nothing winds me up worse than having internet issues that will ruin my time after stream i will tell you that right now like if i have to end my stream you know like say it end right now we only had an hour i'm gonna sit here for the next three hours being like well what am i supposed to do now what am I supposed to do now? Right? But otherwise, yeah, I do. I don't remember that. And then I also go, well, you know what? My mother probably enjoyed it because my mother watches every stream. She's probably watching right now. Hi, mom. Um, but, hey, mama yeah. fearless. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just got to try not to beat yourself up about it because I can sit there and nitpick every single second of a stream. Like, I, you know? Yeah, I hear you on that. For me, I just get extremely embarrassed because it's, it's irritating. Like, I'm a stickler for everything. Like, my audio has to be on point. I don't want nothing freezing. Do you know how difficult it was to get me get through episode two because I was so laser focused on my camera not working? Oh, yeah, I get that. I get that. And I was like, I guess I have to go through it anyways. But it's like, you know, I, for me, like if I have a bad stream, I, I dwell on it just like you do. I'm like, damn, you know, they, cause I'm thinking about what the audience is thinking. I'm like, man, they probably think I'm amateur hour here. Happens to everyone. Happens to everyone. I was watching a collab between the top two Twitch streamers. I was watching a collab, Queso and Jinx. I was watching a collab between them. I watched them live and in color spend 10 minutes trying to fix the audio in OBS. Happens to everyone. Happens to everything. And yeah, Moo was right. You shouldn't feel embarrassed. I get that too. I once spent 45 minutes trying to figure out why, you know, you know, it happens. But yeah, it totally knocks you off, doesn't it? Like you get knocked off balance as soon as like stuff starts to happen and you're like, uh, great. That's true. I mean, because, you know, when you're live streaming, you're pretty, you're live. Like, you can't go back, like, mm -hmm. when you're making a YouTube video, like I did earlier, cheap plug, check out the video. Can Ada have her own Resident Evil yeah. video game? Anyways, when you're making a YouTube video, if you screw up, you can just go back and cut it out because you're just recording it. But when you're, when you're live streaming and it's just like your audio is all messed up and stuff, first impressions mean everything. Somebody could just be coming into your chat the first time and they'd be like, well, damn, this guy sucks. He has a nice beard, but he sucks. Yeah, yeah, but your, your quality's always been good. And your quality has always been good. Be a little kind to yourself there. 
you know? it wasn't it wasn't always good if you go back and you listen to the earlier streams because i had I'm i was still learning about compression and i was still learning about noise noise gate and all that stuff mm -hmm. so like i think it's noticeable in my bloodstain ritual the night playthroughs a lot of the words that i would like i would start to say something and then the word would get cut off because there was too much compression on my audio so Ooh, i yeah i finally got it like as of when i started playing like resident evil 4 and all that i finally got my audio to work the way that i wanted it to where everything is just crisp and clear and i sound like uh you know i could be like in one of those commercials talking about toyota cars toyota cars yeah yeah the voiceovers yeah. i i can do that stuff i know i can or oh, i can yeah. play an evil oh, villain in a absolutely I could play an evil villain in a cartoon or something, like an evil version of SpongeBob yeah. or something. An evil version of SpongeBob, that'd be great. It's like, I don't want that'd no damn Krabby Patties, man. We don't need that kind of stuff around here. <laughs> you know, but yes, um, for me, I, I have learned to kind of shrug it off more. Because when I first started, when I first started, I was mad. Like when I was, remember when I uh, I had to cancel the uh, the Lord Croft and the Temple of Osiris playthrough? Yeah, I do remember that. I was mad because there's a bug in that. There's a bug in that game. I don't and and I went to read on it, but there's a bug in it that kills your audio. Oh, really? So it wasn't even really your fault. It was the damn game. Yeah, it wasn't my fault. Like, there's, it's a piece, it's a uh, port in a piece, a uh, bug in a PC port where whenever you would go to record or anything like that, or you go to play the game, even on voice chat, it would kill your mic and they never patched it. They never patched it, really? So I was like, all right, I'm going to just cancel it, whatever. It's not like I was clamoring to really play that game anyway. <laughs> yeah, but then it throws you off track when it happens, right? It does, because now you're going through everything trying to figure out if it's your mic that's not working, if it's OBS that's not working, if it's the audio mixer. And you're going through all the stuff, and then you find out it's a bug. Hey, I see the bunny in the background. Oh, yeah, he was in the background. I think he hopped off now. But yeah, Odie was coming to say hi. Hey, Odie, what's going on? Bunny King. <laughs> yeah, I just saw him jump off the couch. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but let's move on here because I want to talk about this for a second. We got two canceled games that I'm disappointed about. This source comes from Game Informer. Remedy has canceled its control spinoff. It was called Codename Kestrel. It which was the spinoff of, of it's like uh where you take control of the you take control of the people that that works under works oh, I forget what her name was. God, I forgot. That works under Jesse. And you have like your own spin-off adventure. Remedy canceled that game. And they canceled it because they wanted to focus more on Control 2. And they're doing, they're focusing more on the, the Max Payne 1 and 2 remakes, which is coming out soon. So they wanted to uh, to spread that out to focus on that, on those games. And I'm like, come on, man. Ugh. You had a lot of people that, that were excited about that one. But according to the CEO, Taro Vert, Vertala, I think that's his name. He stated in a press release, our other projects have advanced well and are moving to the next stages of development and focusing on them provides us with benefits. In other words, we needed to downsize. Huh. That's basically what that means. That's just corporate mumbo jumbo mm -hmm. or we needed to save money. Another of game, course. another game that was canceled was the Division Heartland, which was a another free-to-play shooter game in the Division universe. They oh, really? Yeah, they canceled that. It was announced back in 2021. And it was going to be developed by Red Storm Studios. Ubisoft revealed the cancellation in the earnings report. As part of Ubisoft's 
efforts to streamline its operations and adapt to its evolving market trends. There has been further reorganizations within the global publishing teams. Ubisoft had to, has decided to stop development on the division heartlands and redeploy resources to bigger opportunities such as X, X Defiance and Rainbow Six. In other words, we needed to downsize and we needed to save money. For what's that making us money. Yeah, and they're going for, yeah, what's making them actual money. Because I know that everything you listed is an actual money maker for them. That's literally Nothing what that them. is. That's literally what they yeah. said. If you if you sift through all of that corporate crap, they wanted to focus on the stuff that they think would make them more money, which is what companies do. You go with what works. I have no idea what X Defiant is. I've never heard of it. But maybe that's just me. I know about Rainbow Six. Yeah. But Defiant. I know the name. I know Rainbow Six way more than that, though. Yeah, I do. But you got to do what you got to do. I really wanted to see what that control spinoff would be. But I would much rather get the Max Payne, Max Payne 1 and 2 remake collection. And I'd much rather get Control 2. I'd rather them focus more on those things. And possibly Island Wake 3 if they decide to do one. But That'd be cool. I'd much rather get that than, you know, to play a spinoff, you know, but not everybody feels that way. But I figured I'd put yeah. that there. And, you know, the Division Heartland, it probably would have been something like, you know, along the ways of, you know, like not Fortnite, but what's the other one um, that everybody plays? Like It's a free to play. So, you know, it's one of those ones you'll be paying for co cosmetics and costumes and weapons and stuff like that. So I'm trying to think I'm like there's so many free to plays. Yeah. And that's gonna be that's gonna be very common in, in later on as well too. They're gonna be having a lot of those. But the I had to look into it because I am in since I played the division two, I'm in a Facebook group and they're posting all kinds of disappointing stuff about that, you know, that they was looking forward to that. I ain't really have a dog in the fight, but I figured I you know, I was like, it did sound interesting. Just to be able to, but what else could you possibly do though? Like, is it just a battle royale? I mean, is it a, a PVP shooter? Like, come on. You know, it is what it is. And it just kind of sucks that it got, it got canceled. Anyways, though, let's move on. I want to talk about Contra Operation Galaga. That game is out now. Now that's a game from the past. I haven't heard nothing on Contra Andre. in years. Like, I haven't heard nothing on them in a long time. I know that they came out with one for the Switch, but who cares? I just know that it bombed. <laughs> it, it bombed really badly. Must have if I didn't hear it. Yeah, but it, it was released back on February 21st of this year. And it was made by the Way Forward team and published by Konami. Way Forward... That caught the reason why I'm even mentioning this is because Way Forward seems to be like the, the king of beat em ups now. Like, they got some good games that I played. Like, they had the, the Blood Rain Betrayal game that came out on the PS3. That was a great game. And it was it was very colorful and in a different style. Um, they had the, um, the Double Dragon Neon beat em up game. That game was a hell of a lot of fun to play. And they also did. Uh, I th believe they did the new Ninja Turtles beat em up, which was a lot of fun. It was like four players and you could play as April. There's a Ninja Turtles beat em up. There's plenty of them, but, what? uh, but the, the newest okay. one, the I new, learned. the newest one that just came out, like it's, it's so cool. You could play as all four turtles. You can play as, as April and she's going around, you know, clocking dudes in the head with her microphone. <laughs> it's so cool, man. Oh my God. I love that. I had so much fun that with that. Cool. And you could you could play as Casey Jones in that one too with the hockey mask. So it's like way forward is is a very good team if you're gonna do beat 'em ups. So I may pick it up because it does look pretty cool. They also did River City Girls, which is like a a spinoff of, of River City Ransom, the old beat 'em ups from the oh, Nintendo stuff. Yeah. Except for girls, they got to go and save their boyfriends. 
so they go through <laughs> their their boyfriends are the guys from River City Ransom for the Nintendo games. That's cute. So they're going That's through cute. kicking people's asses and stuff. But yeah, Way Forward is, is a great thing. But even deeper than that, I don't know if you noticed, but have you noticed that maybe Capcom is trying to get back in a good not Capcom. Konami is trying to get back in the good graces of gamers because they, they're trying to come back with gaming. They're trying to get away from the pachinko machines, which means they're probably not making no money. But no, they're, they're trying. They're publishing this game. They're trying to come out with the Silent Hill thing. Lord, help us. Silent Hill 2. Yep. Metal Gear Solid. Um, Delta Snake Eater. Lord, help us. But it seems like Konami is trying. They did mention a couple of years ago that they wanted to try to get back in, in our good graces and try to get back the fan base that they lost, I mean, years ago. I don't like know. Like 20 years ago. I don't know We're if they can do it. 20 years ago. I don't yeah, think so. That's true. I mean, I don't know if they can do it because, I mean, I'm I'm trying to, I'm, I guess you could say casually optimistic about the Metal Gear Metal Gear Solid 3 remake because I, I love Metal Gear Solid 3 and I, I want to give them a chance but it's like when you when you you know you give the fan base a middle finger as they did for so long and then you expect people to just come back like nothing ever happened they got a lot of work to Not do happening. because y'all y'all remember Metal Gear uh what was it Metal Gear so Metal Gear Survive y'all remember that garbage ass game that they put out mm -hmm. after Hideo Kojima left the company. And they yep. just they just gave us a bland, generic, I guess you can say, not even zombies, but a survival game with people you don't even know, nobody from the Metal Gear universe. And it was just a boring ass game. And that soured, that soured me on Konami. And I said, I, I would never buy another Konami game ever again. Luckily for me, there were no Konami games after that. <laughs> Luckily for you, that was the end. So I did stick to my word Pretty on that. Much. But I just think that, honestly, I think that Konami's trying to at least get back some of the glory that they that they lost 20 years ago. And they got a, a steep hill to climb. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I can't forgive Konami. Probably still buy their games because I'm one, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, if there's any fan base that I'm the worst at... But um, I mean, I'm casually, op I'm cautiously optimistic about these things. Like I, I want to give it a chance and I probably will give it a chance, but this is their only chance of me. Cause I'm like, man, yeah. if I, if I burn 70 bucks on, on the new metal gear three and it sucks, I'm going to take it right out there to the pond out there and I'll throw it right in there along with resident evil five. Toss it. I will throw it right there in the pond, never to be seen ever again. Gloop, gloop, gloop. It's gone. <laughs> and that'll be it. You'll never hear me mention Konami ever again. No. Yes. But now those are all of my notes. So let's move on to Kelsey's notes. Yes. My notes. Now it's right. we're, we're going to switch over to Kelsey's corner here. Oh my God, let me see this. We're gonna switch no. over. We're gonna switch over to Kelsey's corner over here. Bam. Welcome. What? Oh my God. Welcome to Kelsey's <laughs> corner here. So cute. <laughs> Again, that's so cute. Oh, that's great. Thank yes. you. I now have my own corner. That's so cute. I love that. Let me but fix, yeah. the, fix so, the camera real quick. Sorry about that. Yeah. Go ahead. I, that's amazing though. Bam. Um, that's just amazing. Uh, but yeah, so first thing I talk about uh, is something that probably annoys me multiple times a week, if not a day, depending on when I'm streaming. So it, it's all encompassing, but we'll get into the different types. Back seating when you're streaming now this isn't just about people who backseat i will get into the other subsets of the backseater but if there is one thing especially i don't know who here 
does difficult modes of games and they usually do the hardest mode the first time, yes, hands up. But there is nothing worse than someone who has played a game for like 500 plus hours and they see you attempting to do this on their first try and they're like, they're like, oh, you know, you should be doing this. You know, you should be doing this. And it's like, thanks. Thanks, Team Dicklish. Yeah. Um, I actually, like, I, I'm starting to find it really hard to do Resident Evil games because of that, actually. And that was kind of a rant that I had my stream last time. It's like with, uh, what, like, I can't, I can't deal with it. I also, like, the subset of the backseaters that really annoy me are the ones I call one catters. Which I, I don't know how many people know how much I hate one catters, which are people who sit in one category on Twitch or they only play one game and then they and then they just like attach themselves to any person that plays that game and they will like oh god usually it's either people who play a game like 500 times and they're like they're like well I I beat this game in 12 seconds and I got a high score of 9 million and I took zero damage and, you know, I also got your mom's phone number and, you know, and it's like, man, I don't care. I really don't care. It drives me insane. The other half of it are people who only watch games and they go and they read like every Wikipedia or not Wikipedia, every fan wiki article on a game. They watch all of these you know, these YouTube, like, lore discussion things, they watch people stream it, and they've never played the game themselves. And I'm sorry, I am on Twitch, so that's a large amount of people, but if you're one of those types, please do not come into a stream, yet you're good, and start, like, info dumping on people, just, like, don't do that. Like, really, just, like, don't, because it, it's rude. It, it's rude. Yeah, your mom's phone number, what's up, baby? No, and that's just, like, I, and I, as I do challenge streams, I get that all the time. And that is, I just went on a huge tangent though. But I guess the biggest part about it is like, if I tell people like, oh, I, have you know, I beat all these games. You look at my, if you look at my, uh, you know, you look at my entire list of games I've completed. Like if I tell anyone I've beaten these games on these difficulty meals, people will be like, oh, okay, that's cool. So like, so I have to, I could go on forever, but yes, there, I do not like, I don't like backseaters. I especially don't like wine catters. And I most especially do not like people who spend hours and hours and hours and hours on one single game and then come in and, you know, they showboat that they, like I said, like beat this game in whatever time. And I'm like, what other games do you play? Oh, that's it. Okay. It's very <laughs> it's very pretentious, and I do agree. And that was Kelsey's corner, folks. Thank you. Now it's very pretentious for people to come in. I, I can't stand that stuff. Especially, I put in the rules: do not come in here, and no backseat gaming. I don't ask for help in any of my playthroughs. You never hear me in anything that I play. Let me figure it out on my own. And there's nothing more. You know, nothing chaps my ass more, as they like to say out here. You know, then somebody to come in and be like, oh, you know, you you missed this item in this room. Or this is this an easier way to beat this boss or you can do this or you need to go back because you missed a, a item. I'm like, yo, chill. If I miss something, I miss it. I did not ask for your help. Just let me play the game on my own. I'll figure it out. You know, I will figure it out. Exactly. Or pe people who give you information that you already know already because you've been playing mm -hmm. the game. Like, there's nothing you can tell Kelsey about Silent Hill 3 that she doesn't even, that she doesn't know. So it's like, you know, to come in and be like, oh, you know, you, you forgot this or you did this wrong. It's, it's irritating. I'm like, yo, just go away. Go away, man. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm like, let me figure it out on my own. That's the fun part about playing video games. You go in blind mm -hmm. and you figure it out. Yep. 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 And I think that's a huge reason why I don't like the people who come in and say like, you know, the people who say like, oh yeah, I've completed this game like 500 times or whatever. 
and they act like they're you know they were born knowing how to do a full like no damage run and it's like you are watching the process that you went through and you would probably be embarrassed if someone pulled up all the hours of you learning this process you know it's just it's really annoying and it's like i i've I'm on the fence about, you know, like an instant ban when people do that, because it, my rules clearly say in my stream, no backseat gaming, none. Do not come in here, trying, especially if I just if I'm just playing the game and I'm just starting out, you come in there with that crap, I'm gonna ban your ass. Like no, no other chances. Get the hell out of here. Period. You know, it's just, it's very pretentious. It's very annoying. I can understand that there's some people that are trying to help you, but it just ruins the experience for me. Like, don't tell me what's around the corner before I get around the corner. You know, so I can definitely understand how that pisses you off. You know, because it, it pisses me off because it's, it's hand holding. And it's like, it's just like if you're playing the game on a controller and then you hand it over to somebody else to play. Are you really playing the game if somebody's doing it? Exactly. Or are you playing off of somebody else's save? Because there are cheap bastards that do that. Like one of the, one of the games that, that I got, World War Z, you have people, you, that's a, a game that's grind heavy. And you got cheap bastards that will go to Nexus mods and freaking download somebody else's saves. You know, where they did 100% completion and then act like they're, mm -hmm. they're experts at the game. I'm like, no, you're not. You bought some, basically bought somebody else's game. Yep. I'm like, yep. you could take that damn, Even, it, you could take yeah. that damn people mod. People do that in and, online. I'm sorry? Sorry. I mean, people do that in online too, where they'll buy like high level accounts. Yeah, it's, it's, it's BS, man. I'm like, and then act like. You got people that buy Fortnite accounts and then be like, oh, you know, I'm I'm the shit at this game. No, you're not. You're just plain shit. It's like you're, mm -hmm. you're not you're not the shit. You are shit. You ain't nobody, man. You know, but yeah, just don't do that stuff. Cause that, like I said, that irritate that irritates us. Do not come in here and be like, you know, play the game this way because I will give you a kick swift size 19 boot out of my chat. Size 19, good Lord, Ken. Blame my parents. <laughs> all I wanted was, <laughs> all I wanted was a mustache. That's all I wanted. And you see, I got more than that. They the ones that, that gave, they the ones that gave me the height, be it six foot four. So actually, funny. actually, it was more like my father because mom, I love you, but you are short. I love you, mom, yes. but I can lean on top of your head. You're short, mom. <laughs> Me too with my mother. And I'm only like five, five and a half, maybe five, six. And she's like five, two. And I'm like, here you go. It's funny, funny. though. It's funny because I, when you looked at my my grandfather's uh my grandfather's grandkids all of us i was the smallest out of everybody when we were kids like i was the smallest really? and then i just you know had that growth spurt it was like the jolly I'm green giant I, after 16 i was the you know freaking big dude they're like damn they're like when did you grow when did you grow bigger than me <laughs> it's like i was waiting for your time it's like I was eating that broccoli the whole time while y'all was making fun of me, man. You ate your greens. Yeah. Good. Yeah. But yeah, like yeah. I said, don't don't backseat game. Just come and enjoy enjoy yeah. the stream for what it is. You know, that's what brought us to the dance. So just have some respect about mm -hmm. that. Um I'm gonna exactly. run to the I'm gonna run to the facilities. And I'm oh, gonna yeah, go ahead. I, I'm gonna turn it back to Kelsey's corner real quick. And then I'll let All her right, continue on her notes. I'll be right back. See you in a minute. Mute them up. All right. So what do we have next? What do we have next? So this is, I don't know how many people were reading about this, but um, uh, Quantic Foundry, every, every, like every what, every year or something, they put, they put out, they've been doing it for like, 
10 years or something, they do this uh, survey where it asks people, like, what motivates them in games. And apparently one thing they reported is over, like, yeah, it's, it's got to be 10 years or close to 10 years, I can't remember. But one of the things they've seen a steady decline in is actually strategy in games. And I just thought that was really interesting, like, that, you know, it go. It's just, like, it had seen a, a sharp decline. And so I really, like, it's one of those things where you wonder, like, a chicken and egg thing. Because I can totally say that, like, sure, the, uh, you know, you can say, like, oh, sure, like, the population or whatever of gamers is becoming more diverse and everything, right? But e I kind of see that in games. I kind of see that in games now. I feel like games are, like, they're faster. It's kind of the way with TV shows. Like, I th I think not only is, like, yeah, sure, the population of gaming and stuff. Like, sure, it's, uh, like, sure, it's changing, right? It's changing. Welcome back, Ken. Uh, but it it's just, yeah, it, it's just interesting to me. I, I'm wondering, like... What do you think, like, Nostalgia said it best, gamers need everything painted yellow to figure out where to go. That is one of the things. I feel like games are hand-holdy. Games don't want you to explore anymore. Games don't want you to think. And it's almost crazy how when game, like, you can see that game difficulty isn't how it was. Game puzzles aren't how it was. And, and so I can totally see why like, one of the things that gamers value, or I guess it's the motivating thing, is strategy in games. People don't like to think in games anymore. And I love when games make me feel like an idiot, so, you know? I mean... But I don't know what it... The, the thing is with that, it's like, nobody, like, games are definitely, when you talk about gaming difficulty now, this is nowhere near as difficult as it used to be when we were growing up. There's so much hand holding in these games. It's not even funny. They got save points everywhere that just, you know, you, you never have to worry about losing progress, you know, and again, like going back to the whole Dead Space thing. I love Dead Space, but I hate it ever since Dead Space 1. I hate that feature where you, you hit the, you hit the, um, what is it the, the joystick and then the it navigator. shows you what the navigator i hated yeah. that i still hate it i'm like i don't want people to tell me where to go like come on let me figure it out i hated the map in dead space it was disgusting so that gets a pass but yeah i, I know or it's the same with when you are playing a game and it always has objective markers like everywhere around you like telling you where to go showing you where to go there's no exploration <laughs> That just, that ruins it for me. Cause it's like, I like, like you said, for games to make me feel dumb. You know, that's what makes, that's what makes Sonic Hill 3 so great because the puzzles, not only do the puzzles change with each difficulty, you have to figure it out. Because again, like we said before, there's no way in hell that anybody would free and know, you know, I got to take this, this nut and have it cracked open and get this moon pearl and put it in the door to unlock yeah. this door. You had to figure that stuff out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one was a little heinous. Like, yeah. How would you know? How would you know? Right? They were rough on that one. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you one thing. There's another thing that both the Resident Evil, the Resident Evil 2 remake does and the Resident Evil 3 re remake does. And you do whatever you want with your game. You bought it. But if you have to buy... If you have to buy all the unlockables from the store, then I have no respect for you as a gamer. Like if the mm -hmm. whole the whole part of having fun in a Resident Evil game is to go through the game, you get the S plus or the S rank, and then you unlock the weapons and, and different costumes. And I, I hated it yeah. when they had that, like you can go into the Steam store, you can go into, you know, PlayStation. I don't even know if they still have it there, but you can buy the unlockables you can buy the infinite rocket launcher and, and the machine gun and all of that stuff and i'm like mm -hmm. i'm like why not why not just put a feature in a game that just plays the game for you and you just sit back and eat popcorn 
play the game for you. I think they're what Final Fantasy was that? Was it thir no what, fifteen maybe? Which Final Fantasy was it that people are saying that game like plays for you automatically? I, or less it was one of the newer ones. I forget. Was it fifteen, I think? I, people were complaining. It played all on its own. I have no idea because the last the last Final <laughs> Fantasy I played was Final Fantasy Eight. Sixteen. That was the yeah. last one I played 16. for PlayStation. But yeah, I'm like, almost on Mac, yeah. I do remember that there was, I think, one of the Super Mario Brothers games that was for the 3DS, where they had it, where a feature where they would just have Mario just be invincible through the whole level, like it would just play the level for you. And I'm like, what? Like, I don't, I don't curse that much, but what a bunch of little bitches, man! Like, if you, if you, <laughs> if you feel like. If you if you can't play a game, dude, then just don't play. But if you gotta have people hold your hand, like this is a PBS special, you know, somebody taking you through the game and so we'll just give you saves along the way. We'll give you infinite ammo. We'll give you this item that that makes it so you you don't take damage. That stuff sucks. I don't. I never. I unlocked everything. But do you ever see me play with infinite ammo anywhere? In yeah. any game, it's not it's not fun. It's not fun to do. No, it's not. And it's like it's I not. tell you like this when I go into streams, because you know I'm a Resident Evil Two guy, Resident Evil Four. If I go into a stream and I see the rocket launcher on your back, I'm out. You ever yeah. seen that? You seen that meme? That meme that goes around that GIF where you see Homer coming out out of the bushes and then you see him back right back in, yeah. and he disappears. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. I, I see that yeah. that infinite rocket launcher on your back and all that, and you talking about oh we're doing a a, a speed, uh, what is it a a speed play? I'm like nah, dude, that don't yeah. count for me. No, no, exactly, exactly, exactly. Which is kind of my next point, actually. Which actually, they my next two points. You actually segued perfectly into my next two points. The first one I have. The first one I have, though, is it kind of goes with what you said. You can get the infinite rocket launcher. You can get this. You can get that. Those used to be cheats in games. Like, remember the old Grand Theft Auto? Like, you get yourself a jetpack, and you just, you know, you'd spawn this, you'd spawn that. But those weren't, you didn't use those to play the game. You used those to screw around when you had nothing else to do. Yeah. For the most part, that's why I always thought the cheats were for, right? Like I, I will admit, they were fun. I will admit though, like like going through Vice City in, in the tank and just running over everything. That show yes. was a lot of fun. And you had like yeah, like the six stars where they all the police was coming after you in the helicopters, and I would just I would laugh when they would throw out strips to try to pop tires. But I'm like, this is a tank with treads. What the hell is that gonna do? I know, yeah, exactly. But you weren't playing the game like that. You were just doing it to screw around, and then you'd yeah. go back, right? Yeah, you were just and, just having now, fun. Yeah, and now they'll sell you the tank. Now they'll sell you the tank. Now they'll sell you the jetpack. You know, you can buy that for five dollars, ten dollars. Like that's what they do now. And then right? act, and then act like they beat the game. You know, it's just like people that play games on easy mode, man. I don't care. If you beat a game on easy, you didn't really beat the game. You, as far as I'm concerned, you beat the tutorial. That that's the way I look at it. Anybody that plays Resident Evil on assisted, you need a bib and you need a bottle, and I will put you in a high chair and we can, I can feed you strained vegetables because you are a baby. I've I've been noticing they've been changing the easy mode or God forbid adding a second easy mode, but now they're calling it story mode for people who want to enjoy the story. <laughs> like I almost fe feel like maybe people are being insulted. Like back back in the day, games used to make fun of you for choosing easy mode. Like games would actually make fun of you when you were going to you know, to choose easy mode. Yeah, remember, you know, but, remember the endings that you would get where, like in some of the games where they would troll you for picking easy mode? Like you would get to the end yes. of the game and they would throw up a message and be like, good job, you beat the game. Now try it on a harder difficulty to get the real ending. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, they have 
game journalist mode. And I can remember I was accidentally, for some reason, I accidentally chose story mode in Dead Space when I was trying to do impossible mode. And I was like freaking out because I was one shotting the necromorphs. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, the rule is you have to cut off two of their limbs. Why is this just immediately dying? Like, story mode got, I'm pretty sure they got rid of your need to cut off two limbs on a necromorph to kill it. Like, I'm pretty sure they did, but it's called story mode. Yeah, they can, can they can the have story. that stuff. If I want to, if I want to go through story mode and I want to see how the story is, I'm going to go to YouTube and watch the damn video. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to watch the cutscenes. Man, or, you like, know, I, I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, it's exactly. like back back in the day. Like y'all, y'all go back and y'all play some of them games for Nintendo, like Batman for the NES, where you just had the default difficulty, which was hard as all hell. Mm-hmm. You know, there there was no easy mode when you had Mega Man. Like the Mega Man games, there was no easy mode until we got to Mega Man Nine. You know, but. Yep. You had a standard difficulty, and if you couldn't beat the game, you couldn't beat it. Because you talk about a game like Ghost and Goblins, which is the most difficult game ever created. And go back and play that, and you'll see why. From Capcom, that's when Capcom was king. But we didn't have no hand-holding like that. And those people, like, the, I'll tell you the people that really grind me. You know, you, you're talking about easy mode. But if you're playing easy mode in a fighting game, come on now. Mortal Kombat, no. Street Fighter. If you got to play through a fighting game on easy mode, why are you playing? Why are you playing? The whole, no. point, the whole point of playing a fighting game is, is challenge. That's the whole point. Mm-hmm. And learning all your combos and stuff. I mean, come on now. Like I said, now... Now you just have to hit, press like start button in fighting games. It'll tell you the full combos. But yeah, I don't want to sneeze on someone and I win. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm glad yeah. that they did put that feature in there because back in the day, if if you were playing Mortal Kombat back then and you didn't have Game Pro or you didn't have you know Nintendo Power or you didn't have any of that stuff, you you couldn't figure out what the fatalities were. You had to figure it out by accident. Exactly. You had to f- figure it out by accident, and then you then you were the, the cool kid in school because everybody back you. I, I bet Kennedy knows the fatality, man. But oh you know, man, but oh, yeah, man, everyone copying down like you're. I remember that like one kid would have like a no like a puzzles or they'd have like a you know a strategy guide, and everyone would be sitting around the table, and we'd all been like writing down everything. Yeah, and that was the that was hobbies. the. F- that was the fun part about games is because you had to figure it out. Like, it's like now they just they just hand it to you. Just pay us a little bit of money and, you know, we'll give you this. And I'm like, it's just it's taking the fun out of video games. I don't think that this should be no easy mode at all. I think standard and then I think harder difficulties. If you want to do mm-hmm. that, but this should be no easy mode. Because I, I hear people look. No story re- mode. The Resident Evil 2 remake is a great game, but it's not hard, even on hardcore mode. I was playing that yesterday when I was running around as, as you know, as, as Super Claire. I had in this, this Superwoman costume. And then I and then I switched it to Sailor Saturn. But um, even on hardcore mode, I was just cakewalking through it. It's not that difficult. Mm-hmm. You don't like, why do you need to play it on easy? So that so that Claire could take a little bit more damage. You know, it doesn't make any yeah. sense to me. It just doesn't. You know, stop being mm-hmm. a baby. And it's yeah. like you can you can, I, I can hear them people from a mile away. Well, it's my game. I've spent my money and I can play it any which way I want. And that's true. But I ain't got to respect you for it, son. As Stone Cold would say. Yeah. I'm going. I'm going to troll the hell out of you. Like I, I, I'm a nice guy, but if if you're playing on easy, I'm gonna troll you. Yeah. I'm gonna troll you. I'm gonna be like, yo, hey, I heard Baby Gap got a sale going on right now. You could go in and get some baby clothes. Baby Gap is having a sale. That's hilarious. It's oh like, man. Yeah, I don't even watch YouTube videos like that. 
Like if I go to watch a YouTube video and I and the minute I mean the split second that I see them say see them pick easy, click off. Yeah. I'm like I'm like I'm like what what is like them dating websites when it comes to YouTube? <laughs> it's like your video pops up very easy. <laughs> Swipe like, left. Nah, nah, nah. nah, I'm good. Yeah. It's like good. I never played Resident Evil before, so I'm gonna play it on very easy. Or are you gonna play Evil Within? On on, I guess you could say that's an easy mode, is it? Does Evil with have an easy mode, I'm sure. It has like I think it has like the um. It has two modes, and then you can unlock the the other two. I can understand if you don't want to play a Kumu. I, that's for hardcore gamers like you and I. But you know, at least playing on standard. The only time I ever played something on standard mode is if you have to play standard to unlock harder difficulties like metal gear yeah. solid so i was with fatal frame yeah i had to play it on normal in order to unlock the harder difficulty so that is the only time you know it's just yeah. i just don't i don't like that stuff i just don't <laughs> it's just take no. me right out of it man oh exactly exactly but I'm going to go on to the next point because this is the other side of it, Ken. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is have you noticed now that hardcore modes are made for the unlocks? Because I noticed that um, actually, uh, like, for Resident Evil 8, I have, like, I really want to just go ahead and it's going to take so long. I don't like Resident Evil 8, but... I want to do wait a second, the wait a second, difficulty. wait a second before you do that. Back oh. to back to Kelsey's corner here, folks. Oh yes, back to my corner. Yes, thank you, Ken. I'm gonna pop back that to back corner. up. Bam. I love it. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so I've noticed. I've been trying. I got through Madhouse on Resident Evil Seven, and everyone's like, "Oh, like you need to unlock the circular saw, and you should unlock this, and you should unlock this to do Madhouse." And I'm like, Madhouse was easy. And I wanted to try Village of Shadows. And everyone says, like, oh, it's made so you use the unlocks. And I, and I know people have done these difficulties without them. But it's just wild now. And the same with Resident Evil 3 Remake. Because I'm going to be doing Inferno. And people are saying, like, oh, you should use, unlock the infinite rocket launcher. You should unlock this. And I'm sitting here like, why? Like, why is that, why is that a thing? Like, why, I don't understand why that's a thing. I don't understand why you would make any sort of difficulty with that in mind, right? Like, does that not take everything away from it? I, like, I haven't tried Village of Shadows yet. I haven't tried Inferno yet, but hey, if Crow can do, in, Crow can do Inferno in Resident Evil 3 with no dodging, I sure I will be fine. But I just, like, I can't handle that anymore. Like, I feel like I'm locked out of hardcore modes. And some of them are like that. Some of them are really, like, full of BS. Like, I could tell that uh, Resident Evil 7 was meant to play with all the unlocks and all the coins and stuff. It just takes more strategy. But, yeah. That's uh, my rant on the core here, folks. <laughs> you should be able. You should be able to play the game you should be able to beat the game with the weapons that you have you shouldn't have to use unlockable weapons to beat a difficulty that's bullshit because that kind of defeats the purpose you know i can get through resident evil 2 you know without using any infinite ammo like any weapons like that you get through with what you have that's what makes survival horror fun and I just think that, that yeah. that's a bull, bullshit aspect that they added for that, you know, that these games, in order for you to get through this mode, you got to play with the uh, what the the new game plus items. I'm like, then why mm -hmm. even bother beating the game then? You're supposed to get new game plus items when you beat the game. Yeah, exactly. But, it should be a reward, right? Yeah, but in order in order to beat a difficulty, they expect for you to have those. That makes no sense to yeah. me. I I know. I mean, like I in in and I can see that. Like, man, don't add 
Like, they added a second hardcore mode in 7 and 8, right? But both of them, yeah, when I, I was asking, like, I was talking to people about wanting to do it, and everyone said that. Everyone said, like, oh, you want to use this unlockable and this unlockable and this unlockable. And I'm like, is there anyone here who has done this the proper way? Yeah, play with the weapons that you're given. Instead of having to cheese your way through the game, that just that in, that just ruins it for me, man. Yeah. That exactly. just that ruins exactly. it for me. And I'm not even I'm not even a fan of Resident Evil 7 or 8 anyways. I think they're as boring as dishwater. And that just makes me not want to play it any, you know, just makes me not want to play it yeah. even more. And I'm just I don't like I don't know if I can get through, you know. That's just BS. I don't think I can. And it's funny though, because I was thinking about I was thinking about giving Resident Evil 3 the remake one, one more chance. I may stream it. I still, like I said, when it comes to the original, it sucks. But I, oh, yeah. at least I, I want to, I might stream it one of these days because it's like 10 bucks. Don't cost that much. Yeah. And Sorry it's to like. Who bought it full price. Yeah, gra graphically, it's a beautiful game, but it's just, it's half a game. It's like, it's like, you know, Pepsi Light. It literally, it looks like Pepsi, but they got rid of everything that makes Pepsi taste good. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, so exactly. it's like, that game ain't worth no full price. If they were selling that game for like 25, 30 bucks, I can see that. But for what they gave us, I mean, it would have been different if they created a, a DLC that expanded the game. Instead of giving us that bullshit, you know, online multiplayer game that nobody ever really played. I know. No one plays it. I, th I, gosh, I remember looking at like a Steam chart for people who played it. I think like under like 10 people had played it in like a month or something. Like, give us Outbreak. It could have worked. It could have worked. Like, it, it had the, the engine of the Resident Evil 2 because you can tell just by the running and... You know, it could have worked if they actually took the time to, to work on it. But it's like, it just feels like something they just tacked on. And I would, mm -hmm. much, I would much rather have Mercenaries mode and stuff, which Resident Evil 4 did it right. Resident Evil 4 did yes. it right. They had the initial yes. game, then they gave Ada her shine and, and Ada separate ways, and then they have Mercenaries. Everything yeah. that the original Resident Evil 4 had, the only thing that's missing is Assignment Ada. That's the only thing that is missing. Yeah. Um, they did add, I know they added Mercenaries in 8, which was only fun because you could punch enemies in the groin as Chris Redfield and stun them. That was it. That was the only good part of it. But they had that, but yeah, oh man, they did, 4 did it right. Like, it was pretty much one-to-one. -one. So you can donkey punch people as the Giga Chad, right? Yep, yep. That's, yep. That shit really probably fun. hurts like hell, because, you yo, Chris got them giant-ass arms and junk. Oh, yeah, I, I believe it. I believe it. Yeah, you, you know, if yeah. if Chris punch if Chris Chris is going around punching dudes in the balls, man, like you could literally see like their whole entire like their their kid, their future kids and grandkids disappearing out of sight. Grandkids <laughs> disappearing out of sight. <laughs> they immediately just the the tree, the family tree, the limb just fell off. Yeah, like, like family like, tree's done. <laughs> like that movie Back to the Future where he's holding up the photo and you're seeing that the kids disappearing. That's what happens yeah. when, when Chris punches you in the balls, man. Like it's just your whole your whole entire family disappears after you. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man, that's so funny. I'd play that game just for oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> I would play that yeah. game just, just to go around. Oh, yeah. Freaking... Punching things as Chris is so fun. Yeah, just going around so, so Johnny fun. Cajun people, you know? <laughs> yeah, that would be great. But, yeah, oh, these funny. these are just things that are just becoming the norm in these games, man. And it's just, I find it hard to, to enjoy a lot of these AAA games because they're you know, it's kind of like what Nintendo was doing when they were catering to the casual fan with the Nintendo Wii, 
and you know the Wii U when they were coming out with all these games and the Just Dance and all that crap and all that. I don't, I don't give a crap about all that that shit. But they were, you know, because it was for the casual gamer. That's why that system sold so well because you got a whole bunch of people who had never played video games before, or used to play when they were little kids. Hey, we can, we got the nunchucks here and stuff. And I'm like, what about the hardcore gamers? What about us? I mean, don't we get anything, man? No. That's that's why I hate I Not hated anymore. the Wii. I hate the Wii U. You know, and it's like, eh. you know, it is what it is. But I mean, what can we do? What can we do? They they want to try to get all gamers to buy their stuff. So they're gonna have mm -hmm. you know, cake walk, hold my hand, rainbow in the sky, give me cupcakes. You know, watch Barney on TV. Easy for people. Yeah. Yep. Not, yeah, like playing hardcore modes, like most games don't even have them anymore. Like tons of games don't. Most games just have new game plus. Yeah. They don't change much. And you know that it's it's gotten bad to the point where it's gotten bad to the point where people actually refuse to buy the game if it doesn't have a new game plus. And I say that fully aware that a couple of episodes ago, I was talking about Tomb Raider 2013 because you have to say it like that because Square Enix thought it was genius to name the same game twice the same name. Yeah. So when you say Tomb Raider, you got to say Tomb Raider from 1996, Tomb Raider from 2013. That is dumb as hell, just like the Mortal Kombat 1 thing. You can fight me on it as much as you want. We already had a Mortal Kombat 1 in 1992. And that's what I will refer to it as. This is Mortal Kombat 12 the way that it should be. And if you don't like it, yep. learn to like it. Anyway. Yep. And trying to Google anything from those games as well is so bad. Like you have to put the date or you have to put like OG or whatever the year or like Google's going to show you the wrong one. And I know that from playing Platt classic games i'm like really that's true considering what they have if you look up clock tower there are three games called clock tower mm -hmm. yep and i'm like what were they thinking exactly. it's just like with microsoft like what the hell were they thinking yo you had the original xbox and then they come out with the xbox one mm-hmm and I was confused as all hell when they when they when they said they was gonna give it that name. I'm like the Xbox One. I'm like, didn't they already have the first Xbox console back then? Right. You know, right. Uh, it's just I mean, side tangent on that. But um, like I was saying, um, I did make a complaint about Tomb Raider 2013 when I said, you know, when you beat the game, there's nothing else to do. There's no new game plus. That's different than not. I, I still play the game. I didn't just say I'm not going to buy any more Tomb Raiders because they got no new game plus. I just wanted something else to do. Like when you load into the yeah. save again, what I mean by new game plus is like when you beat it, you can start a new game. You know, and that's it with Tomb Raider 2013, you beat it and then you, you just have to save your last save that you have. You load into that, what can you do? Go find the rest of the treasures that you didn't know where they were. I'm like, that yeah. sucks. I'm like, there's nothing else for me to do here. Yeah, right? Yeah, uh, no replayability. None. Nada. And it's like, none. you spend 70 bucks, and I keep, I keep saying that, and I'm going to keep pounding it in people's heads. $70, folks. We're paying yep. 70 bucks, 75 bucks. For half-assed games that barely work, are they cut it in half? Are they they remove things from these games that wasn't in the original? This is what we're paying for, yep. and and we're just we're just getting fed shit, and we're and we're just here to like it. It is what it is. Exactly, exactly, and you know, and people are fine with that. People are fine with that. Yeah, you know. Yeah because they're Somehow. getting what they want. And, and I'll tell you, I will tell you right now, I'm calling it right now. What's today's date? 27th of May, 2024. May 27th, 2024, that if they make a Cole Veronica remake, I guarantee 
that there will be people complaining. Where is this in the game? This is not in here unless it's Steve. Then I'll be I'll be up here with pom poms doing the cheerleader dance. I'd be happy. You remove Steve from the game, I'd be a happy man. Yeah. I would be happy. It would be like like if if they told me I could have free donuts for a year. That type of happy. Yes. But yes, I guarantee there will be people complaining and crying and whining. Oh, the remake sucks because they didn't put this in the game. They didn't put that in the game and that and that. Remake the game from the ground up. Take everything that was in Cold Veronica and just re remake it the way that it is. Just make Steve better. It's not going to happen. Code Veronica was a long game and it had a lot of areas. I'm sure they're going to get rid of like 50% of Rockford Island. And then like you're going to go, you're going to go to what, Antarctica, whatever it is. You're going to go there for like two seconds, you, you know? Chris will just come, he'll meet you there, and then maybe, and then you'll go kill Alexia. It'll be like five minutes, you know? They'll skip the whole Chris section. Chris will come with you on the plane this time. Chris will meet you on Rockford Island, you know? There's no Steve now, it's Chris. Well, I mean, then do DLC then. Just add stuff, because yeah. at least with, with Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, they're adding stuff to the game. They just added Chaos Mode which is a harder difficulty. They added more costumes. They added co-op, which they didn't have in the game. So now you could be two players in the game. They added a PVP mode. They literally just added all of that stuff to the game. They can do that. Yeah. No you know, you could come out with the initial Cole Veronica remake and then add, add Chris as a DLC, add the Giga Chat in there and what he was doing. Yeah. I mean, why not? They already doing that stuff yeah. anyways. That actually would be perfect. That would actually be perfect. Yeah, now so, that I think about it, that would be perfect. Yeah, you can have the initial game with Claire and what she's doing, and then you have like they did with Ada separate ways. You give give Chris the DLC. Yeah. That would be actually work really well. You know, and Chris would just come in and out at the end. He's only relevant for like the Chris and being there is only relevant to the end plot for like 15 minutes of the game. Like, that's true. really like, so yeah. Cole Veronica is really about what Claire is doing anyways. Yeah, exactly. You know, and exactly. And All they need is, yeah, like she could have that point where like you need to shoot her at the end, uh, Alexia at the end as Chris. That would be perfect. That would be perfect. Right at the end of the remake for Code Veronica, Chris would just, Alex, Alexia would just get shot and then the camera would pan over and we have a young Chris Redfield. That's the other thing. We haven't really seen young, young Chris. We haven't seen like young, young Chris yet. Yeah, because remakes. Chris is, well, actually we did. We saw it in, in the, re, the first remake. That's true. That but was... I guess I mean like, the new engine chris that's true and the thing is that that's the reason why i'm like you know that's the perfect template like if you're gonna do a remake resident evil one remake is the perfect remake they took everything from the original resident evil and they built they built it from the ground up and then they added stuff to it that wasn't in the yeah. original that's how you do a remake don't take stuff away from the game that people remember you know, yeah, and it, that's exactly. that's why I say it doesn't need another remake because you know that if they do another remake of that game, they're gonna remove stuff from it. Oh yeah, or change things. Like I'm sure they'll change things. Like Resident Evil does not need does not need one. Does yeah. not need a remake. And it's just I I don't know. Like I, I'm I, I'm optimistic about a Cole Veronica remake. I know it's something that a lot of people have wanted, but I, I just see this going the way that Resident Evil 3 went. And I oh, hope I know it will. I hope that Capcom learns learns their lesson. Oh, I know it will happen. I know it will happen. Oh. I know, I know. And if, if they remake Resident Evil 5, they can remake it from my memory and erase it from the from the timeline. And I know what somebody's going to say. Everyone says it's fun with a friend and that's literally it. I don't care if it's fun with friends and that's literally it. Because that's the only argument that y'all got. 
I, and know. that's what I see everywhere. I laugh every time I read something about Resident Evil 5 and people literally put that, well, it's fun, it's co-op. That's all people can say. That's the only argument yeah. they could come up with because they can't come up with nothing else. No other argument. Well, it's fun exactly. with a friend. I'm like, if I hear that one more time, I swear I'm going to headbutt a brick wall, man. Like, seriously, I can't hear it no more. That's why I did the, the troll no. thing with your voice. Yeah. I put that as yeah. a soundbite. That's not a selling point, folks. We've had two players for God knows how long now. Why is everybody going off that one point? Yeah, that's because that's the only good thing they have to say about it. It's the only good thing people have to say about it. Yeah, the, same thing with, with Dead Space 3. They say that about Dead Space 3. I haven't heard one damn good thing about that game yet other than co-op. And I think Most that's a negative. Don't even play it. Oh, yeah. Most people don't even know about Dead Space 3. Which says a lot as well. Yeah, see, I, I can which is read fair. I can read people's minds. I know exactly what they're gonna say before they say it anytime I mention Resident Evil 5. I al already know what they're gonna say, man. It's fun. Well, it's fun for yeah. co-op. It's fun for co-op. Yeah. Resident Evil 5, you said that Resident Evil 3 should have been DLC uh should have been DLC. Resident Evil 5 could have been DLC to Resident Evil 4. That's fair. Or maybe it just shouldn't have existed. Or it could have been Revelations 1 or it could have been Revelations 2 or 3. It did not need to be a main entry because that game sucks. It sucks. Or it sucks worse it than. It could have been Ada's own game. Right? And I mean, it, it, I mean, Ada game. it could have been. True. Make sure y'all watch that after y'all get off here um, in my oh, chat. Yeah. Make sure y'all watch watch my video about, like I said, could Ada be a main protagonist in her own game? I really think you guys would like that that video. Oh yes, I. It's I'm a, be watching that after this. Yeah, it's a short video. It's like like seven minutes. And I think you guys will, will really get a kick out of it because I I actually show y'all like all the footage that I'm showing you. Um, of course, Resident Evil two, four, six but also from Resident Evil Damnation, so you can actually see what it looks like. Because Ada's fighting fighting with the president in that one. Oh, okay. Like, literally. And oh, man. Like, if you haven't seen... I'm, I'm gonna, just going to say this. If you haven't seen the Resident Evil CGI movies, y'all are really missing out. Y'all got to go, gotta go watch these things. Because this is what Resident Evil movies is supposed to be. The one with, with Claire and Leon when they first meet, and it's pretty much like a play off of Resident Evil 2 with a little bit of changes in it. They got the one with Chris and Rebecca. They got the one with Leon and Chris working together. They got Damnation, and then they got the one, um, the last one, which has Jill Licious and then Leon. They first, like that's the first time they met. Dead Island, y'all, y'all, y'all gotta go watch that. Get away from this, this fiend bullshit live action crap that they're giving us, cause those movies suck. Yes, they suck. You know, watch the CGI movies. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I've, I've never seen them. You got, you gotta watch them. They're on Netflix. I mean, at least if you can get a good clip of them, like it's literally CGI, so it's like. The newer Resident Evil game cutscenes only as movies. That's what it looks like. Yeah. And okay. Ain't, and ain't nobody in any of those movies, ain't no damn body named Alice in there because Alice was made up. No. Nobody, no damn Alice. Yep. I, I was like, who the hell is that? Anyway, <laughs> enough ranting. Anyway. Let's move anyway. on. Let's move on to the last topic that you want to talk about. Yeah. We have one last topic, yes, and this is just like, it's happened a little while ago. I thought, I just think it's interesting because I'm not really into MMOs anymore, but people may remember this or remember, did anyone remember, like, did you guys know Maple Story still exists? This was like that tiny little like chibi MMO, like way back in the day, except it was, it's owned by Nexon and Nexon Okay, so here's the thing about MMOs in Asia. Maybe, sorry, yes, here's the thing about MMOs in Asia. 
So usually people play MMOs in internet cafes. So microtransactions um, are really, 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 really prevalent. And anyone who has played anything Korean or Chinese made will know what I'm talking about. So the idea there is... If you, if you only have this much time to play video games, you can spend money to get ahead. Makes sense over there, right? Where people aren't sitting at home, people are, you know, that was a thing. That, that was so bad back in the day. Thankfully, we've moved away from that. But MapleStory never did. In fact, MapleStory and Nexon are, I know a lot of people blame DLC on the Oblivion horse armor thing, but... Maple Zuri was actually a Nexon is like that was actually ground zero for like for microtransactions and games. They really were. Like I think the US saw what was going on in Asia. Um, I think especially Singapore and Malaysia, like I think they just brought it over anyways. So all you need to know, first of all, Maple Story, very old game, Nexon, money grabbing, and the microtransaction thing. But what has happened, and I just I just saw I bring this up because this just seems like something that like it's just great. Like if I if I would if I was that player, this would have been great. So there was a player called I was gonna say Niku, it's Niru. And he was about to become like the first level 300. Can you imagine that? Level 300. Spent like years playing this. Um and next one actually like they were promoting it. He was streaming. Like, he was go, like, everything was going on. He was promoting it. Um, and he stopped at 99.93% or something to level 300 and went on a 45 minute rant while, like, the, while it, Nexon was, like, hyping up this live stream. And he pretty much gave a giant middle finger to Nexon. And said, like, here you go, this is, like, what you need to think. And so part of me is, that's cool that you came, like, you went and you, like, it's hilarious to me that a company is promoting your entire stream, right? And you as this big event. And then you just, like, you stop immediately and you're like, no, screw you guys. But at the same time, why did you spend that much time on something that you clearly hate? And is this what's actually wrong with video games? Like, is this actually why, like, what's wrong when we're like, why are people doing this? Because do you have people out here who will, like, play games and do things that they absolutely hate and support it? Yet, at the same time, like, I'm pretty sure, and here's the other side. I'm pretty sure he still went and leveled up to level 300. I'm pretty sure he's probably still playing the game if he hasn't been banned yet sure it's been banned but yeah you, you, you said what i was thinking um so common sense would let you know that if i was playing a game that i don't like i'm not playing it anymore i'm deleting it or i'm selling it why the hell did he go through all of that to stream their game and endorse their game just to just to go on a rant later on that makes no sense sunk cost i guess at that point like that dude's probably had to put thousands upon thousands of dollars into that game right and i see that with mmo players all the time like mmo players will put hundreds of hours i put date i in over the span of like four years i put 300 days into final fantasy right and the amount of people that i would watch play mmos and absolutely hate them hate everything about it, hate the company, but they still play it because they put like 500 plus days into it. Hell no. And I, yeah. Hell no. The thought, the thought of spending a thousand hours playing Elder Scrolls online makes me physically sick. I can't, I I can't force, I, I can't force myself to play no game that I don't like. And for that guy, it makes him look like a complete and total goof. That you, I mean, yeah. not not only did you waste your time, but you wasted your street, your your chess time having to watch this stuff, knowing that it was a game you didn't like. Mm-hmm. I would have zoomed in on yep. my, I would have zoomed in on my face cam, and I'd be like, "Well, that's it, folks. I don't like this game. I'm not playing it no more." And that would have been how they killed it after that, like literally just killed yep. the playthrough. 
this guy, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess you could equate it to, you know, LJ end games back in the day. Karate Kid is Karate Kid is is one of the worst games I've ever played, but you would you would rent it from from the supermarket or from Blockbuster Video, and you'd be like, "Man, I hate this game. Why am I playing it?" But you want to beat it. You don't want the game to to, yep. to destroy you, man, and you just give up. Because that fourth level exactly. was that fourth level was evil, man. The dudes with the spear that freaking that thing is speared the crap out of you and you die in the corner somewhere. But I mean, mm -hmm. I learned I learned from my lesson back in the day. I don't play no games that I don't like. Period. The only reason why I played through Resident Evil 5 is because I wanted to play the whole thing. And that's all that I had on the PS3. What the hell else did I have that was Resident Evil? Until they came out with six. <laughs> <laughs> and I played that because I like to play games and then make a full judgment on that after after I'm done. Mm -hmm. But if the yeah. game if the game is bad in the middle and I know it's bad and and I'm, you know, I'm kind of like, "Oh man, I really don't want to play this game." That's what I cut it off. I'm like, "Nah, I'm I'm not going to do it." Yeah. Yeah, if it's not fun, don't play it. But some people are like psychologically like you know, controlled by it at this point, which is crazy. But I think he got bit by crazy. like, you know, when you're playing the MMOs, are you playing those those pay to win games, which is bullshit. We need to put a bullet in the yep. back of that thing's head. Get rid of that idea. Yep. There should be no there yep. should be no pay to win. That's bullshit. Get... Oh, pay to win is so bad in those games. And I mean, I don't like paying real money in games anyways. I mean, you're going to do that if you're playing Fortnite because there's a skin that you want or Dead by Daylight, there's a skin that you want. Fine, whatever. But paying to win? Paying paying to get, you know, to get 30 levels ahead? Like, come on, bro. Yep. There was, no, nope, the worst I ever had was when I played one of the older, like, Asian MMOs. There was a guy and we used to call his his gear his car because he spent like $7,000 to get it all. $7,000 to get gear in a game that when the next season comes, it's not going to be a thing anymore. Yep. <laughs> yeah, imagine spending, so we said that, yeah, we, we'd always be like, nice car. Because we'd all joke like you sold your car for that. Like it gets bad, it gets bad. You got people. I I guarantee that there are people that have sank thousands of dollars into Fortnite. Oh yeah, I'm sure. You know, oh, cause sure. you you're paying like ten bucks just to get V bucks, and I'm like, dude, in game currency should be earned. You don't shouldn't have to buy that with real money. Same thing with um, with uh Division Two. You the Resident Evil costumes that I had, you had to buy those. Yeah. Yeah, they don't give it to you. So it's like, man, damn, that sucks. So everybody's a sucker yeah. at some point. Everyone's a sucker at some point. That's the lesson for today, I think. Yes, it is. <laughs> everybody's a sucker at some point. Either you're you're paying for infinite weapons or you're paying for that really cool costume because I will tell you like this, if Jill is in the game, I am going to pay to buy it. <laughs> It is what it is. That's <laughs> that's the first thing that I did. I bought Dead by Daylight and then I went right for Jill. And I paid five bucks for. Her. Yep. But well, that's five bucks. Yeah. For 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 a long term happiness. You know, you get to look at Jill your entire time. So worth it, you know? Absolutely it's worth it. Exactly. <laughs> really. Exactly. But I don't think people are sensible with their money anymore. Nope. People just throw, Never were, actually. throw their money away, but at least it's five bucks. Like if, if they would tell yeah, me, hey, you know, pay like because the DLC with the um, with the R the RPD police station, there's a map in there where, you know, of course, you unlock Nemesis and he's the killer coming after you. I'm like, that's not worth no 10, 15 bucks to me. No, just to play one level. Like, come on, bro. Like, I I'm not doing all that. Yeah. Yeah, that's I wouldn't. No, it's just it's a waste of money and a waste of time. Next thing you know, you 
I mean, it. This is why they're releasing these these free to play games because they know that they're gonna get money from it. They know people are gonna pay for more content, and I just think that it's a shitty move that they lock you behind a paywall. So shitty. Like they mm -hmm. they lock you behind a paywall. Like you can level up to a certain point. And then in order to play the game the way it's supposed to be, you got to pay extra money for it. Exactly. No, thanks. And it's like, at that point, you're, you're like, okay, well, I already made it up to level 50. You know, if I want to go further, I'm going to have to, I might as well just pay the rest of the money for the game when they should have just given me the whole damn thing to begin with. Right. You know, but that's how they get their money. These free to play so that they can charge you for items and for 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 ammo crates and all of this stuff that they know people are going to want. Yep. They nickel and dime you to death. Yep. But they do. Don't be surprised when you start seeing Resident Evil free to play games and Silent Hill free to play games and stuff like that. <laughs> all of that crap. Don't be surprised <laughs> when y'all start seeing that. I won't be. But yes, anyways, though, that's it for us today. Again, before yes. we go, y'all can catch us on Spotify. I will upload this. I have to do some editing after we're done. But we're on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Samsung Podcast, Pandora, Podchaser, Speaker, Amazon Music, YouTube, and Twitch. I will have this thing uploaded in probably about an hour because it takes a little bit to cut this stuff down. Don't forget to check out my latest YouTube video. Can Ada be in her be a main protagonist in her own Resident Evil game? You guys will enjoy that. Leave a like. I just linked it in the chat there, folks. Thank you check very much. Head over and check it out. No problem. It is always a pleasure, Kelsey. It always is. Thank you, Ken. It is always a pleasure as well. And we will be, we will be back on June 9th for episode six of the podcast. After the birthday girl, which is, don't forget, her birthday is June 8th. Oh, thank you. Yes. Birthday stream. So it'll be like her own birthday weekend. We're going to have a big birthday stream for Kelsey <laughs> celebrating her. She'll be here with the with the birthday oh. hat and everything. Yes. And we're we're going to be yes, there. I will. We're going to make her. We're going to make her day that day. So everybody show up mm -hmm. for episode six. You guys are great. Thank you to everybody that showed up. I Thank love you, Ken. Love each and every one of y'all. And y'all have a great day. You too, Ken. Thank you, guys. I'll see you later. Take, Take care, care. Kels. Bye.